postseason frenzy. Quinn Milburn has been Stanford's offense. That is until last week when J.J. Lasley stepped up and caught nine passes. He gives the Cardinal a much-needed offensive boost. Defensively, Stanford's secondary is a lynch mob led by John Lynch, who a week ago slipped the noose over the Trojans of Southern California. The bowl picture is also of extreme importance to Washington State, who still has a shot at sniffing roses on New Year's Day. And Mike Price is a huge fan of the long stem variety. Their high-powered offense is led by Drew Bledsoe, who has pitched 16 touchdown strikes this year. It helps to have the number two receiver in the Pac-10 in C.J. Davis, who along with Philip Bobo and this man, Deron Pointer, have the Cougars poised for their first bowl invitation since 1988. Stanford Stadium in Stanford, California, where Prime Network presents the Pac-10 Game of the Week. Today, the Stanford Cardinal hosts the high-flying Cougars of Washington State. Good afternoon, everybody. I'm Phil Stone. This is one of the most anticipated times on the sports calendar, that two-week window every autumn when the politicking for bold invitations reaches fever pitch. Both Washington State and Stanford appear to be bowl shoe-ins, but every win from here on out will dictate which bowl comes a calling. Working with me today on our telecast here on Prime Network, as he has throughout this Pac-10 season, is Russ Francis. And Russ, look deep into your own personal crystal ball. <laughs> Where do you have Stanford and the Cougars playing? Well, Phil, first of all, I can't find that crystal ball, but the last time I looked at it, it was pretty cloudy because there are so many Pac-10 teams that could be in bowl games this year. Washington State could still go to the Rose Bowl. The second-place Pac-10 team could go to the Fiesta Bowl. The third-place team could go to the Freedom Bowl. So one of these teams is going to some bowl. <laughs> well, the Washington State Cougar offense is led by a junior quarterback by the name of Drew Bledsoe. And here in 1992, Russ, he has been sensational in Pullman, Washington. You know, a lot of people have come down hard on Drew Bledsoe, but I still think that he's going to be the top pro prospect this next year uh, pro draft at quarterback and maybe the first player taken. Stanford's Bill Walsh is simply the kind of guy you want to go to Las Vegas with because, Russ, if he doesn't have the hot dice, he knows where they are. Well, he's the kind of guy that makes things happen, Phil. And I'll tell you what, he loves to play these big games. He loves to play against great quarterbacks like Drew Bledsoe because he likes to, after developing quarterbacks like Dan Fouts, Kenny Anderson, Steve DeBerg, and the best of all time, I think Joe Montana, he likes to get into their minds and kind of disrupt things and tear things apart. So Drew Bledsoe's got his hands full today. Russ, you played for Bill Walsh for six years with the 49ers. How you lasted that long with Bill, I don't know. <laughs> but how does he do it week in and week out, year in and year out? Well, I'll tell you, he's an amazing guy. He really is. He uses so many players in his offense, so many different formations. Last week against USC, two tight ends in for maximum protection against number 55, Willie McGinnis. To add that protection for the quarterback, Steve Stenstrom, J.J. Lasley, 26, out of the backfield, was so effective last week. Watch for Washington State to do this. Just meet Lasley at the line today and try and disrupt his pattern. But if they do, if Washington State can do that, Bill Walsh is something else for them, and I think it just might be the tight end. Well, the third man on our telecast team, as he has been throughout this Pac-10 season, is our all-pro sideline guru, Mike Haynes. Mike, you've got an interesting perspective on today's matchup. Well, Phil, I expect it to be a lot of balls in the air today. I expect a lot of scoring by both teams. This game will probably be won in the last quarter. Now, I had a chance to talk to both of the coaches today, and I asked them what did they think the key to winning today's game would be. Well, we're going to have to play consistent football and be very, very patient because uh, Washington State will complete any number of passes, some of them very spectacular, and they run the ball well. So we have to be patient and hope that the game's close toward the end, and then one final drive and a field goal could win. Well, first of all, we've got to play like a Washington State team usually plays. That's with enthusiasm. Um, we've got to control our turnovers. I'm real concerned about what we do, not so much what they do, but obviously we've got to contain Milburn. We've got, a, we've got a plan to take care of Ron George on the pass rush, and we have a plan to take care of Lynch in the secondary, the Lynch mob back there in their defensive backfield. Uh, uh, we hope our plan works. Well, the one thing that you can be sure of today is that Washington State is the number one offense in the Pac-10, and they're going to be going against the Stanford Cardinal, the number one pass defense in the Pac-10. Now, when I played, I loved it when I knew there was going to be an aerial attack. And you can expect that the Stanford Cardinal will be ready for that today. 
Well, Russ, I'm sorry, Mike. The odds makers say Stanford by eight and a half. Russ, I say temperatures in the 70s, the score in the 30s. I don't know about the temperature, Phil. The density altitude is going to be about 5,000 feet. Dew point about 43. Stanford's got the edge. It's going to be a high-scoring football game. Today, it's Stanford and the Cougars of Washington State live right here on Prime Network. The Pac-10 Game of the Week is brought to you by Lexus Luxury Automobiles, the result of a relentless pursuit of perfection. By Diet Pepsi with 100% aha. Uh -huh. You got the right one, baby. Aha. Uh -huh. By Great Western's family of companies, $38 billion strong. Great Western will always be there. By new Coors Dry, it's double chill for a finish as clean as ice. Try Coors Dry and feel the chill. By your Southern California Chevrolet and Geo dealer. And by Chevron, simply smarter. spectacular autumn afternoon here in the city by the bay we are at stanford stadium the temperature hovering around 69 degrees the humidity 43 percent and wind will not be a factor this afternoon this is the 45th renewal of a series that began back in 1936 it finds stanford holding a slim series advantage forged by virtue of the cardinal winning the last two and 12 of the last 15 games in his second tour of duty here in Palo Alto, the genius, Bill Walsh, 7-3 this season. You look at his numbers back in 77-78. In his two tours combined, Walsh is now 24-10. And, and across the sideline in his fourth year in Pullman, Washington, Mike Price, one of truly the great motivators in all of college football. Boy, what a fiasco. Uh, he had yesterday bringing his Cougars of Washington State down to the Bay Area. Their airplane leaving Lewiston, Idaho. The slide inflated while they were at the gate. The team <laughs> spent three and a half hours walking through a mall in Lewiston, Idaho. They finally got here about 8 o'clock last night. Couldn't practice. Went to the tennis courts at the hotel. Went through special team drills at the tennis court, Russ. And Mike told me last night, if we can carry tennis rackets onto the field today, <laughs> we'll beat Stanford. Well, what else do you expect on Friday the 13th? The Cardinal will receive, and there is Glenn Milburn, number four in the Pac-10 in kickoff returns, averaging nearly 23 yards every time he gets his hands on a kickoff. And to kick it away, it is Mike Price's son, Aaron Price. Today's kickoff is brought to you by Coors. The 5'10 junior puts his foot to the ball. It comes to the near side. It is Ethan Allen at the seven-yard line. He is drilled at the 27. Here comes Stanford, Steve Stenstrom, the junior from El Toro High School in Mission Viejo, California. And he played very, very well a week ago against Southern California. The guys looking to see the ball a lot today, Milburn, Lasley, and the tight end, Ryan Wetnight. And the offensive line, we will be watching the back side. The left tackle, Chris Dahlman, who last week came over from right guard and played so very, very well. Stenstrom on the year, 59%. He's pitched nine touchdown strikes. Ellery Roberts still on his feet across the 40. And out of bounds, he goes at the 44-yard line. Ellery Roberts, 6'1", 215 pounds. He's a fifth-year senior. The Washington State defense, they like the 4-3. And Lewis Bush is back from a broken foot to nail down the right defensive end spot. The linebacking core, Kurt Lurcher, he is tough to handle. And the defensive secondary, it's a good one, led by Singor Mobley. No huddle offense for Stanford. We have seen that throughout this 1992 season. In fact, a week ago against Southern California, it caught the Trojans off balance on more than a couple of occasions. Especially on that first and second down, Phil, where those defensive lines, they go from that 4-3, as you say, to that 7-8 man front. Bill Walsh not giving them time to shift into that front. Second down and a long nine from the 46-yard line. Cougars looking blitz, and boy, here they come. Stenstrom, three-step drop, delivers, and it's incomplete. Tried to get it to Milburn coming out of his H-back spot. I'll tell you, they will not be throwing into the neighborhood of Greg Burns. He is the cornerback, number 27. 
second in the conference in interceptions behind Oregon's Herman O'Berry. 5'10 sophomore from Dorsey High School in Los Angeles. Greg Burns lines up at the uh, right corner for Washington State. It is third and nine. Stanford on their first possession here this afternoon. Senstrom is dropped at the 37-yard line. Oh, my. Lewis Bush. He missed the first half of this 92 season with a broken foot, still limping a bit, as I mentioned a moment ago. And, oh, it is great for the Cougars to have him back in the lineup. Well, we mentioned they're going to be hitting the backs coming out of the backfield, but another thing Washington State will be doing all day long is man-to-man -man coverage. They really covered those receivers, 24, Torrey Hunter, all over Cook in the backfield, not giving Stenstrom a chance to get the ball out. Paul Stonehouse standing at his own 23-yard line on fourth and 16. And he knuckles it to the 21. Torrey Hunter has got it straight ahead. Across the 30, spins out to the 32. A 41-yard punt off the toe of Paul Stonehouse. And a 12-yard return. And here comes Washington State's high-powered offense, led by Drew Bledsoe, the junior quarterback out of Walla Walla, Washington. Great size. And boy, what a core to throw to. Pointer, Davis, Sheck Snyder, and his tight end, Clarence Williams. And the offensive line dinged up like just about every other line in this tough Pac-10 conference. First down, Cougars, the ball at their own 32-yard line. And it's C.J. Davis in motion to the near side. The give, Shumbe right there. He is across the 37, dive to the 38, and picks up five. Now the Stanford defense, boy, what a game they played a week ago. They prefer the 3-4. Those three down linemen, alone. Esteban Avila, Jason Bisk, and Tyrone Parker, the line Viking core. Maybe one of the best in all of the Pac-10 conference. George and Garnett, the G-men, nailing down the outside spots. And that secondary, each one of those four guys had an interception a week ago against the Trojan. John Lynch played out of his mind. Second down and six. Play action. Bledsoe has got Davis wide open. He's got it and out of bounds at the 42-yard line. Ron Riddell, the backup left corner, he is the nickelback. He caught the, the subway about two stops late. <laughs> well, that was man-to-man -man coverage on, on behalf of Stanford. They're trying to make uh, Drew Bledsoe pick the first, second, thir third receiver. What he does here is going to Davis, just making great, ma making a great cut on that play, cutting the uh, defender off the sideline. Pointer split to the top of your screen. In the slot, Calvin Sheck Snyder to the near side. Comes C.J. Davis, number two in the Pac-10. Bledsoe looks left, throws. It is caught by Duran Pointer. He's got it and bounced down at the 31-yard line by Von Bryan. You know, last week, Phil, we talked about how the Stanford offense was using so many of their uh, players coming out of the backfield, their tight ends, their wide guys deep. Drew Bledsoe does such a great job of picking those guys up. Pointer on that uh, play, Davis to play before. He'll be going to a right there out of the backfield, really putting a strain and a stress on that Stanford defense. The ball close to the 31-yard line. This drive began at Washington State's 32, following a 41-yard punt from Paul Stonehouse. That is Sheck Snyder in motion. The give straight ahead. That is right there, and he moves it inside the 28-yard line. You know, I was thinking about Mike Haynes when, when uh, Mike was talking about the defensive back when there's going to be an aerial attack, how excited he gets. Well, on the picture on the media guy for Washington State, you see Drew Bledsoe dropping back to pass. He's got a smile on his face. He's the kind of guy, he's a competitor. You know, Joe Montana was very much that, that way. Give me the toughest defensive backfield you've got, buddy. Let me throw against it. I'm going to have fun doing it. Well, the reason why Drew Bledsoe was smiling is because of the targets he's got. Talk about a target-rich environment. Williams, Bobo, Pointer, Brett Carroll on another tight end, C.J. Davis and Calvin Schnecksneider. That's seven quality, thorough red receivers second down and six Bledsoe looks to the near side throws and his caught pointers got it again and he is down quickly at the 24 yard line Juan Riddell and there was a guy bearing down on him right behind Riddell number 17 John uh, John Lynch who we saw last week they call it the Lynch mob just having a phenomenal day against uh, USC 
uh, tackling guys in the backfield, interceptions. He he leads that Stanford secondary. What a great talent came here as a highly touted quarterback out of Torrey Pines High School in Solana Beach, California. Played behind Jason Columbus. Wasn't playing and said, I got to play. Put me on the other side, coach. Denny Green did it. Boy, has he played since. Miss snap count. Balls on the ground. Flags are flying all over the place. Everyone knew the snap count, but the center, Robbie Tobeck. Well, in that case, so you're always looking at uh, two people. As you said, uh, Robbie Tobeck, number 66, the center, and Drew Bledsoe, they're going to have to get their signal straight. You know, this late in the season, you would think that, uh, that the quarterback and center would have that snap down pat, but so many times the coach is coming into a game like this where everything's so important, tensions are running high, they try and alter that snap count. That can com be confusing for both the center and the quarterback. Third down. And seven to the left. It is Duran Pointer. Davis and Sheck Snyder, the other two sets. It is Davis in motion to the top. But so looks left, throws left. Pointer's got it, and he's down quickly. Ron Rattel, that is his fourth tackle, and we have played less than five minutes of football. Way short of the first down. It'll be fourth now, and two at the 24 yard line. And Rodell doing exactly what you have to do as a defensive back when you've got such a, uh, a great receiver as pointer, you've got to get to him. You can't give him any running room. Here is Aaron Price, 11 of 15 on the year, the junior out of Pullman, Washington, the son of Mike Price. Good snap, great placement. Boy, does he get his foot into that one. It's online, and he has nailed it. 41 yards away. Price has done it again. 9.41 left in the first period. Washington State on their first possession has taken a lead. Today's game is brought to you in part by Gatorade. It's all you're thirsting for. Stanford Stadium, a crowd of some 50, 55,000 assembled here, and thus far it has been Washington State on their first possession, going the length of the field, 68 yards. And they put three points on the board. It is three to nothing, Cougars. 9.41 to play in the opening period, and Aaron Price lets it fly again. Ethan Allen once again at the seven yard line. He crosses the 20 to the 23. And that is where Stanford will take possession. There is a final. There is a big upset. Southern California taking out the Wildcats of Arizona. 14 to 7. And now here is what the race for the Roses looks like. Washington at 6 and 1. SC 5 and 2. Washington State really in control of its own destiny. If the Cougars win here today and then go home to Pullman and knock off the Huskies next week, the Cougars would head for the Rose Bowl for the first time, Russ, in 61 years. Milburn, sweep right. No help on the outside spins, and he's going down at the 21, a loss of three. Well, that's one thing, excuse me, Phil, that's one thing the Stanford is going to have to do is they've got to get that running game effective. They're, they're last in the Pac-10 right now in running offense. In order for their passing uh, attack to have as much effectiveness as it did last week against USC, they've got to get uh, Milburn down the field. They've got to give him the ball and do some blocking for him. They've got to be effective in the running game. Second down and 11. The ball now at the 22-yard line of Stanford. The Cardinal with the football. Stenstrom, five-step drop, loses his footing. There's going to be a flag thrown there as the ball is picked off. Picked off by Torrey Hunter. It's going to go for not. It'll be pass interference against the Cougars, so you can wipe out that interception. The intended receiver, David Calamese, was hit from behind as he went for the football. Well, those things happen when the quarterback sort of pumps his arm like that. There, Everybody's in the middle of the field converging towards the receiver. A lot of bumping going on. Let's listen to Pat Flood. got offsetting penalties. They're going to replay the down. One thing that has really uh, held Stanford back in some situations this season, Phil, are penalties. They, last week against USC, they started off with a bunch of them. We didn't see where the holding was, but you can see where the interference takes place right there on Cook. So it is second down at 11. Stanford, the ball still resting at the 22-yard line. Mike Cook comes to the near side. Double tight ends on the right. Pressure, and he's down again. Dwayne 
Anderson. Four and a half sacks now on the year. Second time here in the first period that Stenstrom has been brought down from the backside. You know, you see number 50, Chris Dahlman here, doing a great job on the left side. Obviously, Washington State wanted to push some pressure on the other side with number 86, Dwayne Patterson, coming from uh, uh, Stenstrom's right side. So they're mixing up their stunts, they're mixing up their blitzes. Third down and 17, the ball at the 16. Linebacker from Bakersfield, California. That man right there will make things happen. I mean, he is quick to the hole. He's quick covering the backs out of the backfield. The penalty is against Stanford. Certainly, Washington State will decline it and force them into a fourth down in 20 situation. So, Paul Stonehouse will come on again. The punter out of Pasadena, California. And back deep is Torrey Hunter. Washington State, incidentally, will not have the services of Philip Bobo today as he is here but does not have his pads on. Stonehouse from his own end zone. Good punt. Hunter backtracking, got it to the 39. The return is to the 43, a 47-yard punt. Let's go to the sideline in Mike Haynes. Mike? Thanks, Phil. Philip Bobo, he was questionable uh, going into today's game with a hip bruise. Uh, hip pointer is what we commonly call it. Uh, the trainer said that he was not able to loosen up. It stayed very stiff for him. They don't know if he'll be able to play it all today. He's going to continue to get loose on the sidelines. But as you can see, he has his pads off and doesn't look like he's going to play at least at all here in the first half. And that is a big blow to this Washington State offense. Bobo with 29 catches on the year. That is Davis in motion. The field is to Shambe right there on a misdirection. Shambe carries it to the 50-yard line. Tyrone Parker on the stop at the midfield stripe. The gain is seven. It will be second down in three. You might see Washington State, too, Phil, going more to their running game due to the fact that Stanford is playing a lot of man-to-man. -man. When Washington State has got those three receivers, they turn there when the running back is running with the ball, man to man. Look at that hit. Referees get in it too, but it really takes the uh, defensive backs out of the tackling. Single set back, right there. Play action. Blitz are rolling to the short side. Throws back across the grain. Davis can't come down with it at the 14. Darian Gordon, the senior left corner from Shawnee, Oklahoma, step for step with him. Well, that is a catch that uh, Cougar fans just expect C.J. Davis to make. I don't think that pass can be thrown any better. Bledsoe just lays this right on his fingertips. Davis right here stretching out. Gordon doing a great job of staying with him. Bledsoe's reaction, ah, thought I had it. Thought he had it, could have had it, should have had it. Gordon playing his last game here at Stanford. Sure glad he didn't get it. Pointer, Davis, and Sheck Snyder all to the left. Oh, what a load. The Cougars empty the backfield. Third and three. But so the pitch is out to right there. He is very close to the first down, and he got it. At the 40, at the 41 yard line, correction, the 46. Right there, the last man to empty the backfield comes up with the first down catch. Pull all the wide receivers to one side, get your back, Sean Bay right there out of the backfield, hook him up, and let him get the first down. Great uh, presence of mind by Sean Bay here, getting just far enough for the first down. At the 46-yard line, the Cougars leading at 3-0. They have the football. White Bear, sweep left, finds a hole, and is hit at the 42, dives to the 41. Dave Garnett, the senior right side outside linebacker out of Naperville, Illinois, on the tackle. You know, it's kind of fun as we look at Sean Bay right for his numbers here. 919 yards with a 4-7 average. And look at that, eight TDs. But, you know, you look at his numbers here, you think about his offensive line. And right here at the beginning of this football game, the, uh, the guys are taking charge, and those guys on the offensive line, Stanford defense, one of the toughest in the Pac-10, one of the toughest in the nation, has met a real match day in Washington State's offensive line. 3-0 Washington State, 6 one to play, first quarter. Bear, the lone setback, trips to the bottom. Let's go, airs it out, looking for Davis, and he overthrows him at the 12. 
Again, Davis drawing single coverage from Darian Gordon. Well, number 36, Tom Williams, number 36, the inside linebacker. You're going to see him coming out of the right of your screen, right up the middle. Great job of reading that blocking by the line. Williams, 36, really laying it in on the quarterback. And that's what the defense has to do. Just Bill Walsh says a little punch in time. If you're hitting just before they think they're ready to get hit, that's where you make, you make your most effect. Third and five. Here come the Cardinal. Bledsoe is hit, and he's dropped at the midfield strike. Tyrone Parker and Jason Fisk, the down lineman, lead the charge. It looked like Bledsoe wanted to uh, get, the, get the play to the tight end over here. Williams, he comes out over here. The offensive line blitzing, everybody coming in, stunts everywhere. Bledsoe just not having enough time to get the ball to his tight end, Clarence Williams. Punting it away. It is Steve Johnston. He's averaging 38 yards a punt. He's had three blocked and almost had that one blocked. Milburn backtracking at the six. Still backtracking and is dragged down at the one yard line. Lynn Milburn is brought down at the three yard line. Kwame Ellis almost blocked Johnston's punt. A 44 yard punt and watch it. Johnston leaps to get it. Kwame Ellis is almost there. Back in a moment. We are at Stanford Stadium in Stanford, California. Boy, what a beautiful afternoon for college football. Thus far, Stanford, the goose egg in total yards. Washington State, they're accustomed to this. 57 yards already on the year. Washington State averaging over 400 yards of offensive game. Stenster on the one-yard line. The give is straight ahead. J.J. Lasley does a 360 pirouette out to the five. J.J. Lasley is the but what a game he had a week ago. It's 46 rushes this season, averaging almost four and a half yards a pop. One touchdown a week ago against Southern California. He caught nine passes, caught the first touchdown pass of the game, and really ignited this Stanford offense. The game was three. It is second down and seven. The ball nosing the six-yard line. Gallery Roberts. He's got the first down. 23. Anthony McClanahan chased him out, and Russ Francis, I don't understand why Ellery Roberts doesn't see the ball a whole lot more than he does, because last week against the Trojans, the few times we saw him carry the ball, he rambled. Well, you know, last week, J.J. Lasley was their guy for Stanford, and I think that uh, they're going to be looking for him. Roberts may just be the guy that they're going to be counting on today. They're going to have to, again, spread it out of the backfield and give it to Lasley, give it to Roberts. Here he goes again. Up to the 24 and not much running room after that. The man who hit him, Ron Childs. He is a sophomore from Kennewick, Washington. Joined the Mormon Church last year. Mike Price told me on the field, he is a mean son of a gun. Off the field, they don't make him any nicer. Four minutes to play in the first quarter. Lasley and Roberts are the setbacks. Play action. Stenster to the near side. Roberts is hit and dropped at the 26. Great open field tackle by the free safety John Rushing. The heat Again, is Stanford the going to the, excuse me, Phil. Again, Stanford going to that quick pass, getting the backs out of the backfield quick. Roberts here just not having enough time to turn up. Lucky to hang on to it. It's hit right by the football. And the Cougars fortunate that Roberts didn't have two more steps to get up to speed because once he gets at altitude, it is Mach 1. <laughs> Third and seven, the ball now at the 26. This drive began at Stanford's own one-yard line. <laughs> Stenstrom looks right, wants to come back left. It's caught at the 42 and out of bounds. Mike Cook. His first reception of the afternoon, his 47th on the year, and he is drilled by Greg Burns. What makes these plays so effective, Phil, is this play action. As we look at Mike Cook doing his work here, great pattern on the comeback. Now watch him. He'll head back towards the sideline. He's not drifting upfield. He's heading right back, giving the quarterback a good target to hit. First down, Stanford at their own 42. 
James Dinstrom with time, delivers, and overthrows his receiver, Glenn Milburn. Milburn, not a, a huge target by any stretch of the imagination at 5'9", 175 pounds. Stenstrom, just a junior, but virtually everybody on the field with him on offense are seniors. Milburn, Lasley Roberts, Mike Cook, David Calamese, his tight end, Ryan Wetknight, and four of the five down linemen. They're all gone. Well, you know they're excited. This is their last home game, their last uh, game in front of the Stanford crowd. Stenstrom will unquestionably have an ad in the Chronicle here searching for offensive teammates next year. <laughs> Second down and ten. Straight ahead it goes. Lastly's got it to the 49. He goes for eight, and Anthony McClanahan drops him. You know, and a guy on that play, I mentioned his name a number of times last week against USC, and he is so critical in that Stanford passing game on the left side of the offensive line, senior uh, left tackle, number 50, Chris Dahman, doing a great job in pass protecting, protecting the blind side of the quarterback, but on that draw play, coming right off the line and making that uh, hole possible for last week. Third and three, the ball just shy of the midfield strike. In motion, Justin Armour. Stenstrom with time, delivers to the near side, it is caught. It's a first down for the Cardinals. Glenn Milburn, his first catch today. He's covered by Ron Childs. Well, what a career Glenn Milburn has had here at Stanford. As a sophomore, led the nation in all-purpose running last year and nicked throughout the entire 1991 season. Came back this year, looked around and said, Where's all my wide receiver support? Where's my fullback, Tommy Vardell? Who's going to protect me? How am I going to find places to run? And Bill Walsh had the answer last week. We really didn't have anybody to open up the holes for, uh, for Vardell. Pardon me, for uh, Milburn. First down now for Stanford. You know, Glenn doing something there that uh, receiver, when you catch the ball, sort of the way he did behind him with one hand, you kind of wonder if you really have or not. Ron Childs is right there to meet him as he made the uh, reception, but great. Great uh, concentration on the part of Milburn uh, getting that first down for Stanford. A first down for the Cardinal. At the Cougars, 47-yard line. Washington State leads it 3-0. Used to call that a cross butt. Whew. Milburn runs chest to chest with Steve Stenstrom. Well, he heard the crowd go, ooh, you know, and I'm not so sure it was from the impact or they couldn't figure out who had the ball, but watch Melbourne. They just sort of meet right here and try and decide uh, who's got the ball. And Melbourne wins. Stenstrom, he knocks him out of the way. Glenn doing his job best he can just to get back to the line of scrimmage. Glenn Milburn, incidentally, named 1992 National Scholar Athlete by the National Football Foundation and College Football's Hall of Fame. He, along with Carl Gray of UCLA. Congratulations to Milburn and Stenstrom, seven-step drop. Looking for it all. What's Milburn? And it's knocked away by Greg Burns. And a flag goes down. Whoa, my. Mike Price can't believe it. Neither can Greg Burns. It appeared from our vantage point, Russ, as if Burns had great coverage on Milburn. Well, what a defensive back is trying to do is get his front arm, in this case, Burns, his right hand, as you see him towards the middle of the screen, coming right across your screen here, get his right hand up, but what you don't see is what his left hand is doing. Whether See, it's on his shoulder pads here. Take a look at um, Burns' left hand. He sort of pushes Glenn just a little bit here. Now, as he goes up to block the pass, his left hand gets a hold of the shoulder and the head of Glenn Milburn. That's where the penalty was called. That's pretty tight, though, Phil, you know? A lot of bumping going on there. The defensive back has got a right for the football, too. But whoever the official was that called that saw that left hand and figured it was just too much. He had to disrupt the ability of Glenn Milburn to catch the football. Great coverage by Greg Burns. However, it's a first down for Stanford at the 31-yard line. Stenstrom tripped, I believe, by his own man, number 74, Glenn Cavanaugh, his senior center. And that's no little guy who tripped him up. Kavanaugh, 6'7", 290 pounds. 6'7", and he's a senior? Got to be playing for Mike Montgomery over at Maples. What'd you think? He was supposed to be 6'9", by the time he got to be a senior? What? <laughs> I grew three inches in college. I mean, if he grew any more, he'd uh, have to put him on the basketball team. Absolutely. 
and Mike Montgomery could use him. 27 seconds to play in the first period. Stenster puts it up for grabs. It is caught. Ryan Whitnight, the tight end, to the 11-yard line. Singor Mobley brought him down. Stenstrom doing a great job of finding that tight end over the middle. He wasn't the primary receiver. He looks left. Then you'll see him go downfield to his tight end number 86, Ryan Wetnight. You'll, you'll be seeing, I think you're going to see a lot of the tight end uh, in the passing game today, Phil, because they're concentrating so much on those running backs coming out of the backfield. Good point, Russ. In fact, Wetnight a week ago in a game seen here on Prime Network, Wetnight caught four Stenstrom balls. First down at the 10-yard line. The first quarter is history. Washington State on their first possession got a field goal from Aaron Price and they lead it 3 nothing. From Aaron Price, you look at the quarterback's numbers, total offense, very close. Stanford with 72. Ball resting just shy of the five yard line. It is now second down in five. A very quiet crowd here at Stanford Stadium in contrast to what we witnessed a week ago when the Trojans were here. Milburn inside and whoop is he nailed. Anthony McClanahan leading the charge. 6'2 junior, 105 tackles coming into this game. He is numero uno on the Cougars defense. Imagine sitting at home, sitting in your easy chair and getting hit like this, just right where you right where you're sitting. You got your popcorn there, maybe a soda or a beer. And this guy, number 41, as you're looking at it from the perspective of Glenn Milburn, just comes in and rocks your whole world. Knocks you right off the chair, spills a Coke, beer, kind of ruins your whole day. <laughs> Third down and five. Play action. Stenson is hit from behind and dropped. Kurt Lurcher led the charge. A senior out of Monticello, Washington. You talk to Mike Price about Kurt Lurcher, he said, oh, smart, and what a mobile linebacker. You know, we keep talking about Bill Walsh's offense. Mike Price has, has got his defense. You know, that's the first time in a long time we've seen somebody come off the backside and hit Stenstrom. So he's worked out something in his defense to get to the backside of Steve Stenstrom. The true freshman from La Jolla, California. We saw him hit three out of three a week ago against Southern California. He's 15 of 17 on the year. Now make it 16 of 18. The freshman is brilliant. The clock stopped with 13.04 to play in the first half. What a beautiful afternoon on the farm. Stanford Stadium in Stanford, California, just down the road a piece from San Francisco. 15 plays, covered 85 yards. Stanford eating up seven minutes in two seconds before Eric Abrams, a true freshman from La Jolla Country Day in suburban San Diego, hits from 29 yards away, and we're deadlocked at three. Aaron Mills is ready to kick it away to Duran Pointer and Torrey Hunter. Hunter backtracking way back. And it's going out of bounds. Stanford employs two kickers, Aaron Mills, to handle the heavy-duty kickoff duties, and Eric Abrams is the place kicker for field goals and point afters. Washington, all over Oregon State. Southern California knocked off Arizona 14-7. And UCLA, its first Pac-10 win of the year. Miami drilling Temple. Look at this one. Michigan, 28 and a half-point favorite. Illinois ties Vincent Hill, UCLA's second win of this 92's Pac-10 season. Tripped behind the line of scrimmage is Shumbe right there. Last week against Arizona State, he had over 100 yards. In fact, he is number two in the conference in rushing, Russ, behind Russell White. Right fair, 102 yards per game average, and he had a 60-yarder called back against the Sun Devils last week. There's a good look at the junior out of Walla Walla, Drew Bledsoe. 16 touchdown passes this year, 42 in his career at Washington State. Out on the flats it goes. 
chance to get Shaq Snyder working one on one out there, and Shaq Snyder couldn't spring free from Darian Gordon. That's what quarterback likes to do is get the ball out in the flat to a quick guy like Shaq Snyder and give him room to run. If he can just beat one guy, he's got a foot race down the sideline, a chance for a big gain, possibly a touchdown. to the near side. Davis, Sheck Snyder, and Pointer. Bledsoe looks like he's changing the play. Stanford showing blitz, and here they come. Bledsoe trying to scramble out of trouble. Unloads it. Wide open. C.J. Davis, and he can't get it. Oh, he had it and dropped it. Ron George and Tom Williams, the linebackers for Stanford, in Bledsoe's face and couldn't bring him down. He unloaded the football and wide open was C.J. Davis. That's what happens as a defensive back, in this case, number eight, Kwame Ellis kind of gets distracted. Davis gets behind him, and does he ever get behind him? Receiver's worst nightmare, in the hands and out of the hands. These are the ones that you go home just wishing, gee, if I just had one more chance at that. It happened so fast. Second time in the first half that C.J. Davis has felt a football on his fingertips and couldn't hold it. They have a holding call against Stanford. So that will give uh, Washington State a first down, even though Davis couldn't hold on to that aerial from Bledsoe. Now that reminds me of a play I saw of a young receiver, his first year in the league in the NFL. He was playing for Bill Walsh. Just beat everybody going downfield. Had the talent like Davis. Missed it in the wide open Jerry Rice. He hasn't missed very many cents. First down, Cougars pitch near side. Shumbe right there. Turns it inside, spins across the 42. Aaron Rimbus, the backup nose guard to Jason Fisk, drops him. Rimbus, a fifth year senior, as is Tyler Batson on that defensive line. Esteban Avila, also a fifth year senior for Stanford. Now, Bledsoe's just a junior. Are he will not be around a year from today in Pullman, Washington. I still have not figured out Stanford's mascot. That is the tree. Are you looking at the tree, Phil? <laughs> Davis in motion to the near side. Chambé right there runs into a hornet's nest, and the head hornet, Ron George. Well, you know the Stanford crowd loves their defense. Last week against USC, they held them to minus two yards rushing. USC minus two yards rushing in the first half. Washington State is going to have to make it up in the passing game. Big upset there. Nebraska losing to Iowa State. Look at this. Notre Dame went for two in the closing seconds and got it. Beat Penn State by one. Florida over South Carolina after the Gamecocks led early. NC State knocked off Duke in a seesaw affair through three quarters. Third and four. Bledsoe to the near side overthrows Duran Pointer. Again, pressure on Bledsoe by the Lynch mob. The man who heads up that mob, John Lynch. And John doing a real fine job of disguising this. He stays off the line of scrimmage. He's, he's kind of juking back and forth. Watch him come out of your left, right into the face of Drew Bledsoe, and Drew doing a great job just getting that football off. Steve Johnston to punt it away. Keep in mind, he has had three balls blocked this year. That is Glenn Milburn back at his own 12-yard line. Stanford with 10 men on the line. And oh, they coming, and he got it away again. Milburn should have a return. He's got it at the 17. The return is 10, following the 40-yard punt off the toe of Johnston. 10.03 to play in the first half. We're tied at Stanford. Stanford tied at three. When you look at USA Today's top 30 computer rankings, there are eight Pac-10 teams ranked in that USA Today top 30. The SEC, the ACC, and the Big Eight have four teams in the top 30, but We've talked throughout this Pac-10 season about what a difficult conference this is. Virtually every team in this conference plays a seven or eight man front. And I tell you, moving the ball against Pac-10 opponents is a very, very difficult proposition. Stanford's got the football. It's first and 10. We're tied at three. Hillary Roberts. Led by T.J. 
A.J. Gaynor and Steve Hoyam. Roberts runs into Singor Mobley. The gain is seven. Ellery is another one of those seniors we talked about. Fifth year senior out of Babylon, New York. You look at his numbers today. Every time he touches the ball, he's averaging almost eight yards a carry. That's incredible. Nine twenty-seven to play. First half action. Misdirection. Milburn turns the corner, hit in the open field at the thirty-six yard line. <laughs> Great job on the part of John Rushing. Boy, does he come up to the line. Great pursuit against the run. He's a free safety out of Merced, California. Well, he sure got that quick. The uh, left guard for Stanford, Brian Cassie, 65, cleared the way for Melbourne, but Rushing, number 10, you're going to see him right there in the middle of your screen come up and fill that hole perfectly against a guy by the name of Glenn Milburn, who's not so easy to catch in the open field. Now the Cougar has made the trek from Pullman. Third down and a short one. Yeah. Roberts, he has hit. Second effort gets the first down. Mark Whitmire, linebacker on the right side from Centralia, Washington, brought him down. And Ellery Roberts showing why he does have that huge average per carry with the second effort. First of all, he's a load. He gets hit here right at the line of scrimmage. Keeps going, keeps his shoulders down, knows exactly where the first down marker is, gets it with one last surge of effort. Mark Fields, number 29, had him stopped. And he simply bounced off Fields and carried another two yards. First down at the 40-yard line. Double setbacks, it's Milburn and Roberts. Out across the 43, it will be a gain of three for J.J. Lasley. You know, all the younger players at home, Phil, that are watching the game or watch these games throughout the Pac-10 season as we've been doing them, when you look at the offensive line, the key to blocking for those offensive linemen and the tight ends is sustaining the block. What we're seeing in Stanford's part on the offensive line and tight end is staying on that block, giving the running back just one more chance to get a couple more yards. Backfield. It is second down in eight. Melbourne loses the football and dives on it. Stanford will retain possession. They'll lose four yards. Now we've seen it. This is a second miscue between Melbourne and Stenstrom, and, and I've got to believe that maybe there's a couple of plays that were put in this week that these guys haven't run much because they're both pretty seasoned players. And this doesn't usually happen unless it's a new, new play. Lastly, looks like he just might have caught that football out of Stenstrom's hand before he got it to Milburn. We're going to blame J.J. on that, although he's just trying to do his job. Third down now and 12. They say the loss was only two. Play action. Stenstrom. Now throws, and it's caught. Put by Justin Armour. He's got the first down. Stenstrom almost lassoed for a loss. Stenstrom doing a great job here of just sort of scrambling here in the backfield and finding him, finding Armour right down the middle of the field here. You see, Armour, the receiver's got to make the adjustment when he sees the quarterback in trouble. Armour doing a great job of heading over to the field, right down towards the bottom. Get back to your quarterback. Give him something to throw to. Great job by number 80, Armour. And a terrific pitch from Stenstrom. A first down. The ball just outside the 40. Reverse. Armour wants to throw it. That's so. And out of bounds at the 39-yard line. Stenstrom's got it. A little razzle-dazzle from the genius. Well, you know you're going to see these things. And I've got to believe he designed this one this morning. Here we go. It's a double reverse with Justin Armour, number 80, getting the ball off. That's not easy for a guy to do. It doesn't practice throwing the ball very much, and guess who he gets it to? The quarterback. That'll mix you up. Now the gain is two. It's second <laughs> down now. You know what? Eight. I'm sorry. I don't mean to interrupt you, but as they come to last games, but Bill just, he does that. He knows he's not going to gain a lot of yards. It just makes the defense thing. I think he's just having fun with it, basically. Goes. 
a handoff given to Nathan Olson. That is Merlin Olson's baby boy. Well, he was a great one. Oh, my goodness. Not only a great ball player, but a very, very accomplished football analyst for NBC for so many, many years, along with Dick Enberg. And actor and uh, oh. family man, he does it all. Played 100 years in the NFL, Pro Bowl every year. That's fantastic. Third down and six. Milburn coming to the near side. Stenstrom looking to the short side. Going for it all downfield. One's armor and overthrows him at the four-yard line. Now that's where you're racing down the road in your Ford and you're racing the Chevy and uh, you try to hit it in gear and you just can't get there. You wish we had one more gear. You go neck and neck. Number 80, Justin Armour, they're wishing he had one more gear because Stenstrom let that ball fly. Fourth down now in six. The ball just resting in the middle of the 47-yard line stripe. And to punt it away, it is Paul Stonehouse standing at his own 48-yard line. Torrey Hunter is back at the 10 for the Cougars. Looking for the near sideline, and Hunter can't get it. So Stonehouse tried to find it outside at the 10, couldn't get it there. The Cougars will have it at the 20 when we come back. Pac-10 Game of the Week is brought to you by Diet Pepsi with 100% uh-huh. You got the right one, baby, uh-huh. And by Great Western's family of companies, $38 billion strong. Great Western will always be there. 526 to play on the second quarter. Let's go down on the sidelines in Mike Haynes. Thanks, thanks, Phil. Well, so far it hasn't been a high-scoring affair, but Drew Bledsoe is doing a real good job of picking up what, what Stanford is trying to do with them defensively. If you remember early in the first quarter, he tried to hit C.J. Davis on a long ball. He was actually covered by Kwambe Ellis, a freshman. So he's finding the weaknesses and he's finding the mis mismatches in the in the uh, defense and expect to see a lot of scoring here in the second quarter here. Mike Bledsoe and company with the football and that bevy of wide receivers is ready to roll. We're tied at three. The give straight ahead. That is Chambay right there. He is across the 35 and he's still rolling. <laughs> 38 yards for Chambay right there. And it is Ron Riddell who took him out. You know, you see a running back like Sean Bay here when he makes a break, he breaks a tackle there. He breaks number two tackle here, number 17. John Lynch gets up and tries to make a stop here. He gets past him. Then you can see him really starting to get into it, really accelerating, just really breaking that ball for a long run. Sean Bay right there, 38 yards. The senior from Seaside, California. Bledsoe looking for it all. He wants to incomplete at the seven yard line. What well, Bledsoe has been picking on Ron Riddell all day long. Man, oh man, Riddell, a senior from Crespi High School in Westlake, California. Riddell doing a great job here of just staying with Davis and covering him right from the front, sort of shielding him where Davis could not get back to the football. You look at this Cougar offense. 284 yards a game passing. That's first in the Pac-10. Total yards number one, and they're averaging 29 points a game. That's two number one. That's Davis in motion to the top of your screen. The kid is straight ahead right there. Boy, he is grabbed by the helmet. Tom Williams, the 50-year senior from Fort Worth, Texas. Tom Williams, before last week's game against Southern California, called all of his players together and delivered an impatient locker room speech just minutes before they came out and whooped the Trojans of Southern California. Well, he and number 29, Ron George and Dave Garnett, they're really the heart of that inside linebacking core on the fringes. Those are the guys that do the attacking up the gaps. Third and seven. Now that is Ron George who came across and tapped somebody. And that somebody was Conrad Himmiskern. It'll be offside against Stanford. That's a 
That's a big mistake on the part of Ron George now instead of third and seven. It's third and about two and a half. Uh, quarterbacks like Drew Bledsoe, they do a good job of drawing off uh, the, the defensive guys with the, with the snap count. Russ, how does that change play selection now? Well, you know, now he's got the chance to go downfield to pass. I mean, short pass, Stanford's going to come with everybody. Cardinals showing blitz. Now John Lynch backs away. The give straight ahead, right there, short of the first down. Ron George is there along with Tom Williams. You know, it's always hard to second guess the call, but they've had so much. Washington State has had so much success with the pass. I, you know, I almost thought that they were going to come out of the backfield with Sean Bay or, or one of their other guys. Clear it out with their wide receivers, run somebody out of the backfield. They've been very effective doing that so far in the first half. Fourth and one. Cougars say, let's go for it. This is Mike Price football at its finest. Coming out of the ball game, Calvin Sheck Snyder. The lone setback is Sean Bay right there. The receivers, Davis and Pointer. Bledsoe's got the first down. He needed to get to the 33 yard line. He moved it just inside the 32. First down, Washington State. You know, a quarterback does, or people say, well, why didn't the defensive line really pinch towards the middle? Why didn't they shut off what could be a possible quarterback sneak? The quarterback has a chance to sort of pick which hole he wants. He takes the ball from center. He can step left. He can step right. And he just has to read where the defensive linemen are not lined up. The lone setback is right there. First down, Washington State at the Stanford 31. Straight ahead again. earlier that Darian Gordon number 21 is playing his last game in front of his fans as a senior what a big play for Stanford blue uh, Drew Bledsoe doing a great job because there's nobody in the middle nobody in the middle great blocking by his line he is all alone as he gets hit downfield by Gordon who strips the ball loose and then recovers it great break for Stanford Boy, Gordon, a week ago, a big interception, one of four against Southern California, and he's making it happen here in the final couple of minutes of the first half. Strips the ball from Bledsoe, and that gives the Cardinal the ball at their own three-yard line. Ellery Roberts across the 10, still on his feet to the 17. Singor Mobley brought him down. There is a very, very disgusted Drew Bledsoe. Well, you've got about two minutes to worry about all that type of stuff, Bill. Then you got to get your head back into the football game, and I know that Drew is, is going to do that. He's got to think, you know, how in the world could that happen? We have a scoring opportunity, but there's still two and a half uh, minutes left in this half, and he's got the entire second half to play. Armour comes wide to the right. Double setbacks for Stanford. That is Ellery Roberts. Boy, do the holes open up for Roberts. T.J. Gaynor, the right guard in center. Glenn Cavanaugh clearing it out. You know, every once in a while when I see uh, sort of a the proper angle of, of Roberts when he's running, kind of reminds me of a guy by the name of Earl Campbell used to run for the Houston Oilers. Boy, you get those legs going, and there weren't too many people that could uh, slow him down, let alone stop him. Continues the run, 150, 149, 148 to play in the first half. We're tied at three. Stenster. With time, now lays it up, out for Mike Cook. He's got it, and out of bounds at the 44-yard line. The Cougars had great contain defensively for about five seconds, Russ, and then it broke down. You know, you really cannot fault the secondary of Washington State because, you know, they've got too much time here to try and cover the receivers. Singor Mobley just not staying up with Cook. He thought the quarterback was caught. You just can't give a guy like Steve Stenson that much time to throw the football. Good point. It is first down at the 46-yard line. 135 left. First half action. Stenstrom again. Pressure. He is hit. Unloads the football. And it is knocked away. 
Lasley way down at the 16 yard line and boy was Stenstrom drilled. And I'll tell you a guy that he's going to want to talk to on that play number 65 Brian Cassidy the left guard pulls back to come back and protect him. He's supposed to stay in front of his quarterback allowing Stenstrom to take that big hit. Lasley here on the other hand trying to get back for the football. Just can't do it. Great coverage. Downfield coverage by Robert Turner. 129 to play. Stanford would dearly love to get on the scoreboard once again. We're tied 3 3. Wilbur picking his way inside the 40, still on his feet and out of bounds. He goes at the 35. A first down for the Cardinal. Singmore and Mobley again coming up to make the stop. We start getting a guy like that, Glenn uh, Milburn, excited, and he can make a lot of things happen. He ranks third in the nation and first in the Pac-10 in all-purpose uh, rushing, running 179 yards a game. Watch him make people miss. He gets in the open field. The singer Mobley finally wrestles him down the sideline. Tremendous career here at Stanford. You look at his all-purpose rushing yards in the NCAA. He's behind Ryan Benjamin and Marshall Bull. Stenstrom is hit and drilled at the theme of Clanahan. He came into this game, I mentioned in the first quarter, Russ Francis, with 105 total tackles. That is a ton. Well, you see number 31, Ron Childs, right here. He's taking the block of Lasley and allowing number 41, Anthony McClanahan, to get in for the tackle. The clock stops with a minute and six seconds to play. It's the Stanford Cardinal three, the Cougars three. Six to play in the first half. We're tied. We invite you to stay with us at halftime as we bring you college football today's halftime report. Glenn Walker will bring you all the scores and highlights of today's action. And boy, were there some surprises. College football today's halftime report coming up in just a minute in six seconds. Whew, a bit of razzle dazzle there with the elongated spheroid. Second down and 17. Stanford. Stenstrom. Almost cut from behind. Now delivers. Milburn is open. He's got it. Touchdown. Touchdown. Cardinal. What a beautiful display of poise by Steve Stenstrom. J.J. Ladley just getting there in time to put the block. Gave him time to throw that ball to number five, Lynn Milburn. When he dropped straight back, you're going to see J.J. come up and deliver a block just in time for him to get the, that field, the ball downfield to number five, Lynn Milburn. In for the score. The farm goes crazy. Eric Abrams. That is his second 22nd point after in 22 tries. Milburn, 42-yard snag of a beauty thrown by Steve Stenstrom. What's up, Santa Marta? I love you guys. What else can I say? How can you what? say anything? He's out of breath. What a gentleman. Glenn Milburn, a nephew of a fellow you knew an awful lot about, Rod Milburn. Watched him set the world record at the 1972 uh, Olympic trials in Eugene, Oregon when I was going to college there. 110 high hurls. Boy, could he fly. And there is the man who delivered the strike. Stenstrom, his ninth touchdown, make it his tenth touchdown pass of the year. Now it is up to Mike Price and his quarterback through Bledsoe. You've got 59 seconds to try and make something happen. You're only down a touchdown. Well, this man, uh, Mike Price, has got a lot of enthusiasm, really believes in his players. You can bet they'll be back and be back strong. Cougars with all three of their timeouts here in the final 59 seconds. Mills drills it over the shoulder snag by Torrey Hunter. He's out across the 20, still on his feet, and he'll take it out of bounds at the 34 to stop the clock. A flag is down back at the 17-yard line, but that was a heck of a snag over his shoulder on that kickoff. Showing a lot of ability there, Torrey Hunter, number 24. Not only the catch, but also on that run back. Now let's listen to Pat Flood. Unquestionably, it will go against Washington State. Flipping on the return. Yep. Half the distance to the goal line. First and ten. 
Well, that certainly changes Mike Price's play selection. Instead of having the ball at the 32-yard line and a chance to let those wide receivers run wild, now I would assume you might go with a little bit more of a conservative uh, play selection. I really have to believe that, Bill, with 50 seconds left in the first uh, half, Mike Price is probably going to have to keep the football on the ground or throw the pattern to the sideline to stop the clock. Try to move it downfield, but he's got a long way to go in 53 seconds. Double wide outs to the left. C.J. Davis with Sheck Snyder in the slot. The ball is at the nine-yard line. Shambe right there. Tries to cut, still on his feet. Spins still on his feet to the 16. Mon Bryant brought him down with help from John Lynch. Clock continues to run. Great toss a moment ago by that man. Junior out of Mission Viejo, Steve Stenstrom. And now the football belongs to Bledsoe. Plenty of time to the near side it goes. Pass intended for Davis, and he throws it out of bounds. Pass was intended for number one, C.J. Davis, incomplete. But what you hope to do, and, uh, and what sometimes just doesn't happen, is you want on that second down at least uh, get your first down, move the ball, move the chains upfield. Now it's third and three. You've got to throw the ball again, and that's going to eat up more time on the clock. Now that's what Washington State does best. Mike Price's offense ranked number one in the Pac-10 conference in passing, total offense, and scoring offense. Thus far, they have been held to three first half points. It's right there. He is grabbed by Tyrone Parker, the left defensive end. And now Stanford wants to call a timeout. Lynch goes racing in there. And on fourth and two, Stanford wants the football again. Hey, when you've got a punt returner like Glenn Milburn, why not? Well, exactly, and Stanford has done a great job inside the 20-yard line. They've got like 23 scores out of 30 trips inside the 20, so they get the ball around, especially down this close. You know, the way Abrams have been kicking, they've got a heck of a chance to score and pick up more momentum going into the, uh, going in at halftime. Yeah, we thought we would have a high-scoring affair. Hasn't happened thus far in the first half. Aaron Price on Washington State's first possession hit from 41 yards away to give the Cougars a quick 3-0 lead. Eric Abrams said, I can top that. He connected from 29 yards out. That tied it at three in the second period. And then a moment ago, Stenstrom, a beauty to Glenn Milburn, over the shoulder, catch 42 yards. See you later, Stanford, a 10-3 lead. Here's Steve Johnston. And boy, Stanford is going to come. Three block punts already this year for Steve Johnston, the Cougar punter. They're going to drop back into coverage. Not a particularly good punt taken at the 48-yard line. John Lynch will throw it backwards and throw it out. John Lynch has done it all here at Stanford. He quarterbacked his first two years, free safety his last two years. But boy, I'll tell you, he can throw, and he's a great baseball player. Well, he's throwing going away from the receiver. He drills it right over Glenn Milburn's head. And if you want to play exciting football, you want something new on every play, anything's possible, come play for Bill Walsh at Stanford. Uh, it's it's exciting. You, you know, you never know what's going to happen as a player. He'll draw these things up and say, hey, guys, how'd you like to try this? I'm sure when he gave John Lynch that play, John was grinning from ear to ear. You know, John Lynch has already signed to play pro ball. He's in the Florida Marlins organization, played last summer for Erie, Pennsylvania. A very, very good pitcher. First down, Stanford. Stenstrom. Three wide outs to the right. Stenstrom losing his footage. And now losing his balance. That is Dwayne Patterson who led the charge. And that is the final play of the first half. Halftime score. Stanford 10, Washington State 3. And now let's go to Glenn Walker. And Glenn, how in the world did Illinois tie the Wolverines of Michigan? Welcome back to Palo Alto, California, where our Prime Network Pac-10 Game of the Week shows the Stanford of Cardinal leading the Cougars of Washington State 10-3. Since Drew Bledsoe took over as starting quarterback for the Cougars of Washington State back early in his freshman year, only four times in 27 games has he failed to throw a touchdown pass. Well, as we said at the beginning of the game, Phil, we thought this was going to be a high-scoring game. The temperature has dropped, the density altitude is down, and so is the production of the Washington State offense. But you can better believe they're making some changes at halftime, and Drew Bledsoe is going to come out firing that ball in the second half. Stanford's Ron George said before last week's game against Southern California 
that the key to Stanford's remainder of this 1992 season was to play 11 men in your face defense. Boy, are they playing that again this week. Well, Coach Mike Price from Washington State said this Stanford team is much like the Arizona yeah. State, State defense they played last week. Very aggressive, hard hitting, very penetrating. They have done that. They've they presented a lot of problems for Washington State. And how about those fun plays that Bill Walsh is throwing in on the Stanford office? I don't know where the heck the ball is going, and neither do they. You know, you talk about defense in this conference, Russ. You know firsthand, this conference is unquestionably the stingiest conference in all of college football. Seven Pac-10 teams are ranked in the top 19 in the nation in total defense. Well, this game began on a quick note. Washington State, on their first possession, got a 42-yard field goal from Mike Price's son, Aaron Price. That gave the Cougars a 3 to nothing lead. And then in the second quarter, it was Eric Abrams of Stanford, the true freshman from La Jolla, who hit from 29 yards away, and that knotted it at 3-all. And then still in the second quarter, Drew Bledsoe and the Washington State Cougars were going for the lead. Bledsoe called his own number, and was he rambling for the end zone? He sure was until number 21, Darian Gordon, comes in here and strips the football, does the same thing that gave Stanford the lead last year against them. Turnovers hurt Washington State, and it's hurt them here today. Seven plays later on the ensuing drive, Russ Stenstrom eludes the rush of Kurt Lurcher right there, regained his balance, and just watch this thing of beauty. Watch number five, Glenn Milburn giving the ball in the open field, nobody there in time to stop him. Touchdown, Stanford. Now that's the situation. It's 10-3 Cardinal. Let's go down now to our third man, Mike Haynes. Mike? Thanks, Phil. I'm with Tom Hansen, the commissioner of the Pac-10, and I'd like to ask you a few questions about the roll hole. Is it locked up for Washington so far? No, Mike. We still can have a three-way tie. If Washington State, USC uh, both won next week, there would be a three-way tie. Quick computation makes it look like if that happens, Washington would go to the Rose Bowl because of the tiebreaker formula, which is too complicated for the time we have. But we're having another great finish to a tight Pac-10 race. Well, this is a phenomenal year for the Pac-10. Several teams look like they may get bowl bids. Has there ever been a year like this before? We've had others where we've had five, but five is a high water mark and it would be a great year for us. And uh, it looks like we have a very good chance to do that, Mike. Okay. Well, guys, the bowls are wide open for the Pac-10. Back up to you in the booth, Phil. All right, Mike, twilight amongst the Santa Cruz Mountains. Tonight's halftime stats are brought to you by Chevron. And they are certainly reflective of the tight game we have had. First downs, the Cardinal has doubled Washington State's total. Rushing yards, the Cougars way out in front of uh, Stanford. But look at passing yards. It's a little bit of a surprise there. Drew Bledsoe is being outdueled by Steve Stenstrom. Total plays, the Cardinal with the edge there by eight. And that lone turnover while Drew Bledsoe was on his way to the end zone, Darian Gordon simply picked his pocket. And you look at the comparisons between Bledsoe and Stenstrom, you see Drew 6 of 11 for only 49 yards. Stenstrom 8 of 12, 146 yards, and that beauty, the 42-yard aerial to Glenn Milburn. We are set to go with second half action as a light fog has begun to set in over Stanford Stadium. At the four-yard line, it is taken. Out across the 15, near the 20. Duran Pointer takes it out across the 30-yard line and out of bounds there near the 34. Now Washington State's first half possessions, they went 44 yards on their first possession and got that 48-yard field goal from Aaron Price. And after that, it wasn't much of anything to speak of. Now, Duran Pointer officially chased out at the 39-yard line. That is where Drew Bledsoe, a surefire number one pick in the upcoming NFL draft. Great size for a pro prospect, 6'5", 227. He empties the backfield. Here's the three-step drop. It is caught out across the midfield strike. And down he goes at the 41-yard line. It is the tight end, Clarence Williams. Butch Williams, 6'2", senior from Renton High School in Seattle, Washington. We talk about another high pick when it comes to the draft. Number 98, Clarence Williams, is going to be one of those guys. You give him room to move. Showing some speed going downfield. The tight end just likes to get out there in the open. He doesn't get to do as much as the wide receivers. But this guy, number 98, can do it all. Now Clarence Williams is coming back to this stadium in January to take part in the East-West Shrine game played right here at Stanford Stadium. In motion, it is C.J. Davis. First down, Cougars. Bledsoe looking near side. Puts it up for grab. Pointer wants it, and it's intercepted. Or was it? Knocked away. Ron Riddell had it. 
and it looked like his own teammate John Lynch might have stripped it away from him. Well, Pointer doing a a good job of trying to push. Well, not really push, but kind of get Riddell out of the way here as the ball drops down. Riddell's done a real good job. See him, he's following the receiver. Pointer tries to push him out in front, but Riddell doing a great job of just staying with him, covering him, not giving him any time to get back to the football. Incidentally, Philip Bobo apparently has gotten loose. He's put on shoulder pads. He's in the ball game after uh, walking the sidelines the entire first half. Second down and 10. Straight ahead it goes. Shambe right there. And he is hit by Tom Williams after a gain of five, maybe six. And we would expect more performance or more yardage by Shambay Wright Fair. Washington State having 100 yards rushing in the first half compared to USC's minus two last week. So they're being very effective, and all that is going to do when they're effective on the ground is open up the passing game for Drew Bledsoe and his fine group of receivers. And what a group of receivers they are. Pointer, C.J. Davis, Sheck Snyder. Riddell again knocks him down. Ron Riddell, number 10, has been one busy corner for Stanford. You know, you're mention mentioning the uh, defensive backfield for Stanford, Riddell, and, and all the guys back there, John Lynch, and the fine group of receivers for Washington State. He left out the tight end, Clarence Williams, number 98. I think he's going to be very effective down here inside the 20. Now Clarence Williams and Brett Carroll on the other tight end. A junior out of Novato, California. That is right fair once more. Fair runs into Ron George. Oh, my. You know, since 1971, no Pac-10 player us has more sacks or tackles for losses than that man right there. Well, we saw him the play before. He and Bledsoe were sort of tapping each other uh, on the shoulder. Great play because Ron got there just after the ball let go. If Drew Bledsoe had held on to it any longer, he had another sack. Now you see George, one of the 10 finalists for the Buckus Award. Second down. 11. Long snap count. Let's so wait. Now flushed out. Or oh, he can run it instead of extra throw. And it's caught at the 15 yard line. Durant Pointer's got it again. And we've got flags down in the offensive backfield of Washington State. And that is the area where more often than not holding takes place. Could be clipping. Well, I think at the last part of that play, I saw one of the linemen. I didn't get his number, but he pushed the defender in the back just before he got to the quarterback, and you really can't blame him. He's trying to protect his quarterback. Now, keep your eyes on number 74, Bob the Bryant. Let's listen. It is going to be offense. holding against Ten the yards. offense. In the spot of the foul. Watch Bob Garman. He's the strong side guard. He'll come from your left right there. <laughs> Does he get rid of Estevan Avila? Well, you know, he's trying to protect his quarterback. It's hard to blame him. He doesn't want Drew to take a, a direct hit, especially from the backside. Avila bearing down on him very strongly. You know, there's not a whole lot else he can do, but it really drops him back. Second and 32. To the left is Pointer. And in the slot is Shep Snyder. And in the backfield is Aaron Rendis. Now, was he drawn off by the snap count of Drew Bledsoe? Rembis is saying uh, the Cougar quarterback backed away from center. Now, what does Pat Blood say, the referee? Dead ball, ball start on the offense, repeat second down. Now, Rembis saw something and took advantage of it. So now it'll be second down and 37. That's heads up for a defensive guy. You know, you don't want to make any mistakes, especially when you've got him backed up 32 yards. It's now second down and 37. Right fair out of the backfield. Eludes one tackle. Can't get by Dave Garnett. Garnett helped out by Darian Gordon. Right there on the reception from Drew Bledsoe. Well, the game is eight. It'll be third and 29. And 
number 51 Estevan Avila in there again and a couple guys Dennis Kern uh, was, was all over him Bob Garman trying to protect Drew Bledsoe 51 getting him fits back there You look for the ball to head downfield in the direction of C.J. Davis or Duran Pointer here on third down. They're calling it 30. In motion, Davis. The screen sets up. It is caught by right fair after being tipped at the line of scrimmage, and he is way short of the first down. Tyrone Parker, 6'4", 290-pound left defensive end, is the guy who tipped Bledsoe's pass. Well, when, the, when the screen takes that long to develop, and the ball gets tipped up like that. There's no chance for it. The, the linemen have already run past the, the receiver. In that case, Sean Bay right fair. Stanford had everybody back. It's like a prevent defense. It opens up, you know, a lot of room for a screen, but you've got to get it to him quick. Johnston, three punts today, averaging 41 yards. Glenn Milburn, third in the nation in punt returns. He has brought two back this year for touchdowns. Johnston puts it straight up in the air. It's going to roll dead at the 14. So that will stop the clock with 11 minutes and two seconds left. The third period, Stanford will have the ball. They already have a lead. Tonight's game is being brought to you in part by Gatorade. It's all you're thirsting for. 11.02 to play. Third period, Stanford. A touchdown in the closing moments of the second quarter out in front of Washington State 10 to 3. Darian Gordon is the man who semi responsible for Stanford's 10 3 lead as he stripped Drew Bledsoe with a football in the second quarter as Bledsoe is heading for the end zone at the four yard line. Stanford's got it. The ball marked at the 15. Flags are flying all over the place. Pushing and shoving going on down there in the trenches. Dwayne Patterson is a little finger popping with Ryan Whitnight. It will not be Holyfield and Riddick Poe, you ball, can be sure. Ball start on the offense. Repeat first down. Boy, did you see that heavyweight fight last night, partner? Missed it. Oh. One of the very best heavyweight fights ever. Here is Stanford's possession list through the first half of play. They punted their first two possessions. Got a field goal from Eric Abrams on their third possession. The fifth time they got their ball, they went 96 yards and capped it off with a 42-yard pitch from Stenstrom to Milburn. 11 minutes left. Stenstrom looking over the middle, throws. It is caught out of the 14-yard line, and man, he had everybody on the punt by Mike Cook. John Rushing was on top of him. Sindor Mobley was there, and Cook's going to come off. I don't know if Mike Cook has ever been on the subway in New York City, but I'm sure that's what it felt like right there. Everybody was converging towards the middle of the field and got there just at the exact same time the football got there. Very tough to hang on to when you've got everybody beating on your head. And writing graffiti all over your home. <laughs> Second down and 15. to turn it inside, finds little running room. Hit first by Ray Hall, the strong side defensive tackle. And finished off by Torrey Hunter, the left corner. And now Milburn will trot off. There's Hunter, a sophomore out of Curtis High School in Tacoma. I'll tell you, Curtis High School has been a pipeline to Mike Price and the Cougars of Washington State. Six players currently out of Curtis High are playing for the Cougs. To the right, it is Justin Armour. Mike Cook is to the left. It is third and 11, Stanford. J.J. Lasley wants up. He's got it. Across the 20 and way shy of the first down. That will force Stanford into a punting situation. And on trots Parker Bailey, the deep snapper, along with putter Paul Stonehouse. You want to know what hitting sounds like in this conference? Just listen. Ooh, is right. So you want to play Division I football? Golf. Teach your kids to play golf. Stonehouse. Oh, does he drill this one? My, oh my. Torrey Hunter way back at the 10. Can't find the seam and a flag is down. It'll be an illegal block against the Cougars. Paul Stonehouse, a 70-yard 
punt, and that is a career best. That is his 11th punt this year, Russ, over 50 yards. Man, is he a happy punter. Uh, one heck of a kick, but number 56, T.J. Folkers, linebacker for Washington State, just really hit that Stanford player in the back right in front of the officials. It's down there when he's that close to the to the, uh, to the return man. you got to let him go. You just can't afford to drive your team back that far towards the goal line. Illegal block in the back on the return team. First and ten. Thus far in the ball game, Bledsoe has thrown for 99 yards. 9.34 to play in the third quarter. Bledsoe and the Cougars will have it at the eighth. Bledsoe's numbers I mentioned a moment ago, 99 yards passing. And you look at his last 22 games, he has been over 200 yards in 19 of those 22 efforts. Straight ahead it goes to the 11-yard line. It is... Shumbay Wright Bear as he runs helmet to helmet with Ron George. Wright Bear, the senior out of Seaside, California. Now I think you're looking right there at the first quarterback who will be taken in this year's NFL draft. Should say next spring's NFL draft. Second down and seven. Trip wide receivers to the near side. The give again goes straight ahead. Wright Bear. And he's carrying some luggage out across the 15-yard line. And that luggage weighed 290 pounds. Luggage looked an awful lot like Tyrone Parker. Yeah, look at Wright Fair. This year, he is over 1,000 yards. Number two in the Pac-10 behind Russell White in yards per game average. Third down and three. Again, trip receivers to the near side. They've emptied the backfield. White Bear is to the right. Bledsoe scrambling out of trouble, and he is tackled by Ron George. Fourteenth quarterback sack this year, and that is your Pac-10 leader. You know, Ron George has had a lot of success all, all year long, but give a lot of credit. Two guys like Jason Fisk, number 72, Esteban Avila, number 51, Tyrone Parker, number 60, for taking up those offensive line, giving him a chance to get in there to sack Drew Bledsoe, 14 sack this season. Steve Johnston, he'll have to unload it in a hurry, and he does it. Oh, four punt, hand over hand off the side of his foot. It bounces at the 30, and will go out of bounds at the 32. The Cardinal, tremendous field position following the 27-yard shank off the side of Steve Johnston's foot. I can tell you some happy guys right now. Defensive coordinator for Stanford, Fred Von Oppen, Keena Turner, the linebacker coach, Tommy Homo, they're all up in the booth. Great job uh, uh, of getting their defensive guys in there and getting Ron George, number 29, open in for the tackle on Drew Bledsoe. Here comes the Cardinal. First down at the 32-yard line of Washington State. Roberts and Mark Fields say hello on the far side. Mark Fields highly recruited a couple of years ago, spent an extra year in junior college. Just arrived on the scene for Mike Price this year, a junior college transfer out of Cerritos, California. Pretty good size, too. It's 6'2", six, six, 223. We talk about Stanford's stingy defense. This Washington State defense, when they get fired up, they can really shut an offense down. No game. And this time, Stenstrom and uh, Ellery Roberts run into one another. So the Stanford offense, uh, a bit of confusion here at the 32-yard line. It will be third down and 10. Now a victory for Stanford would send them to 8-3 and three in the year, 5-2 and two in conference play. Passing situation for Stanford. Washington State looking blitz. Well, there's the cat and mouse game. Stenstrom changing the play, and Washington State responding. Three-step drop. It's caught at the 26. 
David Shaw, his first reception of the evening, and out of bounds, he goes. A first down for Stanford at the 18. Great job of Shaw keeping his feet down by the sideline where Stenson gets the ball just on a hook. You'll see on the right side of your screen, Shaw pivots around after the hook, just lowering his head, just getting down, just in time to avoid Robert Turner downfield for the first down. J.J. Lasley, who played such a huge part in last week's big win over Southern California, has sort of been the forgotten man thus far in this ball game. He is in the game along with Milburn. Milburn has hit at the line of scrimmage and pushed backwards. I watched the state defense being really tough against the run, but going back to that last play, Bill, you know, one thing that, that the Walsh offense will do is they'll say, Ben, but don't break. You're going to send Lasley out sometimes, uh, Roberts, that case Shaw, just trying to move the ball around as much as they possibly can. Milburn, tough, tough day. Averaging less than two yards a carry in this game. Lasley, the lone set back behind Stenstrom. Stenstrom looking right, throws it up on the crossing pattern. Pass intended for David Shaw. Step for step coverage at the three yard line, and the pass is incomplete. Stanford now faced with a third and long nine situation. You look at Washington State's rushing defense a year ago, they were allowing 230 yards a game against the rush. Boy, Russ, look how they've shut it down this year. Well, they're playing great, great run defense. They're also doing well in the pass. I think number third is number three in the uh, Pac-10. And they've really, really improved that defense all the way across the board to make it a solid wall. Third and nine. the 16 hit at the line of scrimmage and momentum carried him into about the 15 yard line Todd Shaw was in on the stop I'll tell you when you've got a field goal kicker like Eric Abrams the freshman out of La Jolla you hear a whole bunch whether you get a touchdown in this particular situation you just want to get points and thus far Abrams on the year 16 of 18 three for three last week one for one thus far tonight. This one from 33 yards away. Boy, look at the distance. He missed it. Whoa, he missed it. What you have just seen is a rarity. Eric Abrams misses from 32 yards. the situation 10-3 Stanford 524 to play in the third quarter thus far Drew Bledsoe of Washington State 10 of 16 for 99 yards but only two of his 10 passes have gone for more than 15 yards let's go down on the sideline Mike Haynes why has that long game not been there for Washington State well Phil I really think it's because Stanford knew coming in this ball game that Bledsoe would be throwing uh, they've been losing the ball that is Washington has been losing the first down battle and they've been caught in second and third and long situations which really makes it pretty easy for the defensive coordinator to call some good defenses to stop the passing game to the right it is Davis pointer is to the left the long setback is right fair first and ten Cougar let's so three step drop he shoots it out caught at the 26 yard line Deron Pointer, the junior from Curtis High School in Tacoma, who came into the ball game with 25 catches. That's his fifth tonight, a total of 30 on the year. Washington opting, Washington State rather, opting in that case for possession passing. Just move the ball upfield. Now it's second and four. You know, they can really kind of dictate uh, what they're going to do in the passing game. And there's a Washington State player, number 74. That's Bob Garman, Bob the Garman. strong side guard. He is one of the very best in the entire nation. The senior guard out of Bremerton, Washington, has had a chronic neck problem all year long. Let's hope it is not a flare-up of that uh, that same condition. Well, you mentioned he's one of the senior guys on the line. He's one of those leaders on the offensive line for Washington State that makes all the calls when you see blitzes and stunts being set up on the defensive line. That would be a real loss for Washington State. Now the Cougars seven and two coming in four and two in Pac-10 play. They lost to Southern California at the Coliseum 31 21 
And somehow they lost to Oregon at home two weeks ago, 34-17. Rebounded last week in Pullman to defeat Bruce Snyder and the Sun Devils of Arizona State, 20-18. It has been cold. It has been wet in eastern Washington. And in talking to Mike Price last night, he said, Phil, I can't tell you how happy we are just to be playing a game number one in warm weather and number two on natural grass. 455 to play, third period. Second down and four. Play action, Bledsoe left, he's being trailed. Throws, and is intercepted. John Lynch has got it. His fourth interception of the year, his second in two games. And John Lynch ought to go over and put a big hug on teammate Dave Garnett because it was Garnett who forced Bledsoe to throw it before he wanted to. Well, we haven't seen a lot yet of John Lynch all day long like we did last week against USC, but here he is, right in position for the interception. Last week against USC, he was a Pac-10 Defensive Player of the Week. He was, a, for the second time during the year, he was also the Pac-10 Defensive Player of the Week against Notre Dame. Real impact player. Tyrone Parker delivering an impassioned speed to the rest of his defensive stars. That is Ellery Roberts, and boy, is he depleted at the 34-yard line. Well, nothing will inspire an offense more than to, to have a turnover by your defense, especially giving you the kind of field position they've got on Washington State's 34-yard line. Now there is John Lynch. He is the head of that defensive lynch mob for Stanford. 16th interception this year. You look back to 1991. They had trouble picking off opposing passes. Drew Bledsoe, tough night thus far, but his work is far from done. Second and six. Straight ahead, Lasley. He is grabbed and thrown back by Kurt Lurcher, the strong side inside linebacker. Al Washington, number six in the nation, an easy time with the Beavers. USC favored in that game. I don't know how they won it. UCLA knocks off the Ducks nine to six. Miami, ranked number one in the nation, defeated Temple. And there's a big surprise. Illinois, 28 point underdogs. They tie the Wolverines. And Florida State, boy, Bobby Bowden. They must have given his team tire irons before the game. 70 points. Third down and a short four. Still on his feet, he's got the first down, and Milburn let go. High stepper, touchdown, Stanford. This is what a guy like number five, Glenn Milburn, can do for you on a 42-yard TD, excuse me, 31-yard TD run. Now watch this. Little pitch out to the left. Number 24, Torrey Hunter comes up, has him nailed, has a hold of him hanging on. Glenn just shakes him loose down the sideline, 31 yards in for the, the touchdown, his second of the night. He had a 42-yard TD catch. That man is explosive and dangerous anywhere on the field. him spin around in the backfield going to our right on the screen here and he says great blocking it is it is great blocking David Shaw number 84 throws a great block but watch this run Glenn Milburn shakes him loose down the sideline Singor Mobley trying to grope for him there no way 31 yards in for the touchdown this is body control this is control of your body movement balance and desire you know, Russ, you heard Glenn Milburn say a minute ago, hey, it's my last game, i got to do something. In actuality, it's his last regular season game here at Stanford Stadium. But Glenn Milburn is coming back here to play on January 24th in the East-West Shrine game along with Ron George. So Glenn's going to have one more opportunity to thrill the hometown followers. Keep going, got to get 31 points. Get two more, 31 points. Two more touchdowns. If you know something we don't know, we got to have 31 points. 
to the 17-yard line, and down he goes. Washington State will have it. Here comes Drew Bledsoe. Well, he's saying 31 points. He's got 14 of them so far. So, excuse me, 12 of them so far. 17 to 3, Stanford. Time for Drew Bledsoe to turn it up, as he has done so many times. And I'll tell you, Washington State this year, and you touched on it in the uh, opening, Russ, when you said he's been under some criticism. He's taken a few darts. But I'll tell you what, even though Washington State has had a tendency to start very slowly in the first half, they've been a second-half team. Whether they can do it against the likes of this stingy Stanford defensive secondary, that's a huge question. It really is, Phil, because as the week, uh, as the game goes on, last week against USC, USC, a real strong offensive team. They, they really outgained everybody, not scored everybody in the fourth quarter. Bill Walsh loves the fourth quarter. He says, you know, we hit them a little bit each time during the first, second, third quarter. Hit them before they're ready to get hit, wear them down, put them away in the fourth quarter. Bledsoe, 11 of 18, 108 yards, not a Drew Bledsoe outing by any stretch of the imagination. Double wide outs to the right. In motion, that's Philip Bobo. Right there, hit behind the line. It is Ron George, and oh, he is playing like a house on fire. Ron George read that play perfectly. When you have the likes of Toby Norwood filling up the middle, there's no place for Shabe right there to go, but out to the outside to meet number 29, Ron George, head on. Well, that'll shake you. You know, that'll just sort of, your whole helmet rattles. Mike Pierce, I tell you, right now he's running all those things up in the confuser in his head. What play is going to work against this tough Stanford defense? Well, I said a moment ago, only two of Bledsoe's 10 completions have gone for more than 15 yards. And now the Cougars have three wide outs to the right. Over the middle it goes. Pass intended for C.J. Davis. And Bledsoe throws it behind him on third down and nine. Coverage by Darian Gordon. Cardinal is held. Defensive series for Stanford. And the fans love their defense here at Stanford Stadium. They've done quite a heck of a job all year long as Glenn Nobre, number five, gets ready to receive the kick from Steve Johnson. Stanford looking as if they're going to send nine, maybe ten. Milburn standing back at his own 38. Johnston. Again, not particularly long, but he kicks it away from Milburn, and Glenn will just let it roll dead. It's down at the 41. The clock stopped with a minute 34 seconds to play in the third. It's Stanford 17, the Cougars 3. You know, only once since 1984, Russ Francis, has Washington State not scored a touchdown. It happened a year ago at the Rose Bowl when UCLA beat Mike Price's Cougars 44-3. to Well, you know, as Mike Haynes mentioned earlier, Phil, when you shut down that running uh, game of Washington State, you know they've got to go in the air passing. It really gives the defensive backfield and the rush an advantage. Stenstrom looking to the short side, wants to air it out down the field. It goes and is knocked away. A pass intended for David Calamese, the senior flanker out of St. Louis, Missouri. But Washington State, their defensive secondary, also playing uh, very, very well on that play. <laughs> Calamese number 80, 89 kind of loses his footing there just a little bit. Just a little bit. You know, when you're trying to keep your feet going like that, it's so tough. Robert Turner, number 35, sticking right with him all the way down the sideline. Happened to catch a foot. Calamese goes down. Second and 10. Draw straight ahead. Lastly, crushed. <laughs> Lastly, the heir apparent to Tommy Bardell's job. Bardell leaving last year after scoring 20 touchdowns his senior year. I'll tell you, that's a tough act to follow. I don't care who you are, but J.J. Lasley has made the best of it, has accepted his role, and I think he is really uh, the embodiment, Russ, of what a rules player is all about. Third down, now at 11. Stenstrom. Oh, takes it down. Eludes one tackler across the 50-yard line, and he's got the first down. I didn't think quarterbacks were supposed to do that. 
Well, somewhere about 10 years ago, uh, somebody said in the NFL and in college, quarterback just doesn't run with the ball anymore, guys. You, you're just too valuable. But watch Steve Stenson take off. The middle's wide open. His offensive lineman is sort of standing there. Where are you going? Where are you going? Come back here. We're not supposed to do that. Glenn Cavan on number 74 trying to follow him downfield as Glenn sees him take off. Where are you going? He tries to get in front of him to help open up the hole. David Shaw also 84 putting in a block there for his quarterback Steve Stenstrom. From the 47, final 24 ticks of the third quarter. It is first down, Cardinal. Flanker around. Milburn now going to go back the other way. There are Cougars growling everywhere. Whoa. Nine white jerseys converging on a guy who's just 5'9 and 175 pounds. Doesn't seem fair, does it? <laughs> You're back there all by yourself on the reverse. Nobody there. That is the final play of the third quarter. Stanford 17, Washington State 3. Tonight's third quarter notes are brought to you by Great Western. Stanford's second touchdown again set up by a miscue by Washington State Milburn. His second touchdown of the game. Chambay right there, 93 yards today. He's over 1,000 yards of the year. And thus far, Drew Bledsoe, not a great day for the Washington State superstar. 11 of 19 for 105 yards. But keep in mind, he is the kind of quarterback, Russ Francis, you give him 15 minutes, he might give you the world. Doesn't take a lot of time with the, with the weapons he has to score some points. And with 15 minutes left, there's a lot of football left to be played here. Fourth quarter beginning. Stanford on top by two touchdowns. Stenstrom out to the right side. It goes. It is caught. Mike Cook pulls it in. That is his second catch, making his third catch of the night. Now Stanford contends to do exactly what we saw them do a week ago, and that is if they're going to go to the pass, use it as a ball to on the play. Now it looks like uh, Glenn Milburn shaken up a few moments ago as he's getting some treatment. Appears to be a right hand or a right arm. Third down now and 11. Cougars desperately want to force Stanford to punt it away. Calamese. He is close to the first down, and I believe he got it. David Calamese, the senior flanker from St. Louis, his first catch of the game. He had caught six balls all year. That is the biggest one he's got this year. He got excited about this one because after the catch, you know, he does what a receiver is supposed to, make a move on your defender, make him miss. That's what Calamese does right here. As Robert Turner, 35, just missed the tackle. Great for the first down. Great move for the first down. Turner is a junior college transfer from just across the bay, Oakland, California. Lastly. That's Jim G. Lashley off that tackle. Yeah, he rambled for four before Ron Childs rolled him down. Now those are plays as we watch Glenn Milburn come in, so it appears he's okay. That's those are the kind of plays Lashley's last play where you're sitting at home and you hear that impact and you, you can feel it in your living room. I mean, it just sort of rocks the walls and you call up the seismic control and say, hey, do we have a little tremor here in the neighborhood? <laughs> Says something, shouts something to David Shaw, gives straight ahead. Down to the 28 yard line, rambles J.J. Leslie. Leslie played his high school ball alongside another outstanding running back who sees quite a bit of work across the bay at Cal, Russell White, Crespi High, Van Nuys, California. Well, Stanford doing a great job of ball control, keeping that clock running. They're going down now inside the 30. It's third down and one. They're doing everything right on offense, just keeping the ball going. Just keep that drive alive. Third and one. A moment ago, Stanford converted on third and 11. Ahead it goes to Leslie. He's got a first down. Mike Price and his wide.
Washington State defense has simply got to find a way to shut Stanford's third down conversions. Well, this man here, number 26, J.J. Lasley, showing the kind of uh, enthusiasm, the kind of intensity he showed last week against USC. Keep the drive alive. That's what you say in the huddle all the time. Listen, man, we're down inside of 25. Let's keep this drive alive going and score. 12.03 to play in the game. First down, Stanford. Screen sets up near side. Milburn's got it. Turner slowed him down. And Singdor hopefully finished him off. Glenn Melvin, real effective as a receiver here. You watch this pass. He has to turn around behind him. The ball's almost on the ground. Then tuck it away and, and run with it on the screen. Really showing a lot of ability. He's going to be the kind of guy in the pro football field that, you know, they're going to use him in a roll situation where you split him out, out of the backfield. He can throw the ball. I mean, he's going to be so effective for some pro team. But how durable will he be, Russ, at 5'9", 175? Very. He's got the football. Student body right. He's got the corner. He's going to go. Touchdown, Stanford. Melbourne, his third of the game. Tell you what, this guy is counting on these men up front here who are doing a great job. You'll see him pull to the right on student body right sweep. Glenn Milburn, number five, coming around. Now watch him tiptoe up, up the sideline. Just watch him just tiptoe up the sideline. What a great move. I'll tell you what, this guy can do it all. We asked about his Washington State player is down. But as we watch his line pull all these guys to the right, you'll watch Glenn Milburn just follow his blocking just perfectly up the right sideline and watch that tiptoe ballet act. This is, this is poetry in motion. You talk about his durability, if a team uses him correctly in this kind of capacity as Bill Walsh uses him in Stanford, he's gonna play a long time. Third touchdown of the night. Milburn, a 42-yard touchdown catch from Stenstrom in the second quarter, a 31-yard romp in the third period, and just now, 21-yard run around right in, and it has been the Glenn Milburn Show. Catch one of those footballs and you win. You know, he said something about 31 points. <laughs> he's saying, what did I say? Well, he's got, uh, he's got 18 of them now going for 31. Not only can he talk the talk, he can walk the walk. That's, that's a tight, tight rope act right there, I'll tell you, right along the sideline. Singor Mobley is uh, being escorted off the field as he was shaken up. 11.47 to play. It's now Stanford 23, the Cougars 3. You know, that offensive line, there's no more greater feeling, feeling of pride and accomplishment to watch your running back. You know, go around the corner like that. You're doing your job. You're blocking. The backs are blocking. You know, it's... It's just, it's a great feeling to watch him just turn the corner, go in and score. Eric Abrams is on to tack on the point after. From the hold of Chris Bird, Abrams has got it. 11.47 to play. That man is a bona fide megastar. Milburn, three touchdowns tonight. to three the Cardinal coming in an eight and a half point favorite well it has been the Glenn Milburn show today he caps off a 58 yard drive from 21 yards away student body right Milburn three touchdowns high kick taken in the end zone and the Cougars will begin at their own 29 yard at their own 20 yard line let's go down now to Mike Ames well Phil uh, uh, Bledsoe of course is gonna need all the help he can get from his offensive line, and he's gonna be playing now without Bob Garman, his starting offensive guard, who's probably the, the best offensive guard or offensive lineman on that team. Uh, it's not a time that he's, he would like to lose the talents of that young man. Now, there is no probably about that, Mike. He is unquestionably the strength of that offensive charge by uh, Washington State. The loss of Garman is a huge loss. Bledsoe throws, it is caught. Look how quickly Stanford's secondary closes on the ball. Led by Ron Riddell. 
You know, every week, Phil, there seems to be a new star rising in the Stanford offense, the defense, special teams, guys that come up and uh, and sort of answer the call. And Riddell is that guy this week. John Lynch is always there every week. Ron George, Mr. Parker, number 60, a fine, fine defensive unit. Don't forget the G guys, Garnett. Ron George. Yep. Cougars empty the backfield. Here's a little slant in. C.J. Davis runs into his own interference. Could not get out of the way of his own his uh, own quick tackle, Conrad Pimisker, in number 77, as he ran right up the back of Pimisker. You're going to watch number 21 here. He's got coverage. They try to pick uh, Daria uh, Gordon off. Great read. Gets past his own uh, guy, kind of slips around him. Picks up the man on the, with the ball, Davis. Tackles him. First and ten. At the 30-yard line. Trip wide out to the right side. Right there, moves to the left. Same play. It is incomplete out at the 35. Boy, again, Bledsoe all but abandoned the deep game. Well, he hasn't had a whole lot of time to get the ball downfield. He's been getting a lot of pressure from that, that Cardinal defensive line, but, you know, Vaughn Bryant, number four there, you know, he had a big game last week with interceptions, knocking balls down, tackling. They're just all over those Washington State receivers, just not giving them any room to breathe. Second and ten. Right there, headed the line of scrimmage, and roll down, Aaron Rembis. You're down by 21, Russ Francis, and you know this, with the final 10 minutes and 21 seconds, Washington State can ill afford to dink and dunk. They've got to get on the board with some quick plays, get the ball back, because they need three touchdowns. They need him, and they need him in a hurry. 10 minutes seems like a long period of time, but it goes by fast, especially when you're running the ball like that and the clock keeps moving. Pointer, Davis, Sheck Snyder all come to the right. Throws the coverage, tipped in the air and incomplete. Shambe, right fair, the intended receiver. Sheck Snyder trots off. Esteban Avila with great pressure on Bledsoe, and a force, a punt situation forces Steve Johnston onto the field. And Rod Milberg, who already has 118 all purpose yards today, is on the field. Boy, what a game that man has had. Three touchdowns, one on a pass, two on good runs, 21 and 31 yards. Milburn, fair catch, and he had room to rumble. 9.44 left in the ball game. Stanford has the ball. They've got a 24-3 lead over the Cougars of Washington State. Pac-10 Game of the Week is brought to you by Lexus Luxury Automobiles, the result of a relentless pursuit of perfection. And by Great Western's family of companies, $38 billion strong. Great Western will always be there. 944 to play, Stanford 24, Washington State 3, Glenn Milburn closing out a brilliant career here at Stanford Stadium. This is his final regular season home game, and boy, what thrills he has provided everyone with here in Cardinal Country. Milburn now just 12 yards away from the number three all-time spot of career leaders and all-purpose yards in the Pac-10. Charles White, number one, Darren Nelson, Marcus Allen, formerly of Southern California, and Milburn with 118 yards tonight, just a dozen yards behind Marcus Allen. Seventy-nine yards a game. That's number three in the nation. Tops in the Pac-10 by a bunch over Curtis Conway. Milburn, he's going to go for some more. Oh, look at him go! Out of bounds at the thirty-yard line. Then Milburn. He is putting on a clinic, partner. Well, he just passed the one fine running back, Marcus Allen, in the all-purpose yards gain category. You want to watch a guy with quick feet? Watch Glenn Milburn with this move. A little counter swing around. Get the linebackers moving. It just gives you a step, just a little heartbeat. Keep guys like 41 McClanahan off your back. And then the rest is all foot speed. 
451 all-purpose yards now tonight for number five in the Cardinal jersey. Ellery Roberts. Ooh. Did he take on Don Sasa, the weak side defensive end? Sasa, a sophomore from Long Beach Community College. Well, Stanford here just trying to play air-free football. They've done a great job in the penalty category this this game. There are three penalties for just 20 yards versus Washington, Washington State's six penalties for 61 yards. You remember earlier in this ball game, Russ, Lynn Milburn had carried the ball eight times for 15 yards. Since that time, he has been electrifying. Second down and seven. Roberts again, sweep right. He turns it in, he's inside the 15, he might go. Out of bounds at the seven yard line. Boy, Ellery Roberts, a fifth year senior, just like Glenn Milburn. So Stanford's gonna lose its number one and two H back to graduation. They sure are, and I'll tell you, you're gonna watch the guy number 70, 65 as we watch Roberts here go to the right, pulling Left guard, Brian Cassidy, get out front and lead that play up the sideline. Two blocks, one here. Now watch him lead up on, on the block here, just helping his back here, just pushing Roberts in the back. Over there. Come on, you can score. Roberts down for the first down. Stenstrom over center. The up back is Lasley. The H back is Ellery Roberts. Roberts play action. Stenstrom looking near side. Throw. And it's caught. Touchdown. Justin Armour. His fifth touchdown reception of the year. Well, Phil, I've got to believe that's that could be the final nail. Justin Armour, great concentration on that ball. Stenson just sort of does a little arc over the top of all those Washington State defenders. Play action pass brings all the linebackers into the line of scrimmage. You watch Justin raising his arm up here. He says, please, please, just get it out in front of me, right over the hands of Torrey Hunter, number 24. Great concentration, Justin on. A hold by Chris Berg. He places it beautifully, and Eric Abrams drills it. There's Justin Armour, a sophomore from Manitou Springs, Colorado. And guess what? 31 points. I think somebody, number five, Glenn Milburn, predicted this. There are 31 points now on the scoreboard. Play action pass once again. Steve Stenstrom back. Great touch right over Torrey Hunter. Great concentration by, by uh, Justin Armour. That's 14 to 21 for 194 yards for Steve Stenstrom. Two TDs. His first one, a second quarter, 42-yard beauty to Glenn Milburn. And this one from seven yards away to the man of armor, you know, Justin Armour. Excuse me, Phil. We talked last week going into the USC game about how he'd been taking the pounding. Boy, he had really been brutalized. They put guys like number 50, Chris Dahlman, in the left tackle, changed a few things around on offense, spread the ball around the passing game, give him time to throw the ball, and he can show you what he can do. Great touch and great catch. Well, Stanford. Gearing up for the big game, the battle for the axe. A week from today at Memorial Stadium in Berkeley, down on a knee. And Stenstrom is going to call in late dinner reservations, and boy, what a happy party it'll be. <laughs> well, you know what? There's eight minutes, and I, you know, I know Washington State's down 31 to three. Bob Gorman is not very happy, but uh, anything can happen. You know, when you're on the sideline and you're way ahead like this, you've got to caution yourself of getting relaxed there's one more game in the season there's plenty of time left you don't want to you know you want to avoid injuries and don't let the other team score now washington state desperately needed a win today to stay in a hunt as slim as it is for a rose bowl berth a loss today would take him out let's so hit as he delivers it is caught by Duran pointer he is on his feet to the 39 a first down only the third pass by bledsoe this year uh, pardon me, this game for more than 15 yards. You know, you would think, too, Phil, I'm sitting up here watching this, and I'm trying to get in the mind of the defensive coordinator, Fred Von Oppen, and linebacker coach Keena Turner, who's up in the booth. We watch Pointer go down here across the middle. 
you would think that you're going to lay back like in this prevent defense. They're going to attack this Washington State offense. I guarantee it. Good. This is where you kind of say, well, we got them over the line. We're rocking back on the heels. So again, caught by right fair. And he is hammered out of bounds by Billy Whitman. You know, I was uh, stationed in Tehran, Iran with Billy Whitman's uncle, Bill Whitman. We were broadcasters for the Armed Forces Network when the Shah was in power in Iran. And it was Bill Whitman and Bill Stone. Good morning, Tehran. You know, I thought I recognized your voice. That little ham radio set. I used, I used to let, you were my hero. That was great. Yeah. The operative word there was not ham, was it? No, no, it was fun. Jerry Romano, our producer, just reminded me over the, uh, the headset here. That is White Bear out to near the midfield stop. Strive he is hit and dropped by Dave Garnett. Now you look at the Cougars coming in, number one in the Pac-10, as they were rolling for over 400 yards a game tonight. This Stanford defense has stymied Washington State. And there's one man who is largely responsible, Dave Garnett. You know, you really count, Phil, you really count on your fellow team members to contributing. They bring in the uh, Washington State sitting on the sideline trying to drop a play that works as the chains come out to mark uh, for the first down. It looks like they just might have barely made it. But you, you rely on your teammates, you know, Garnett and Ron George and all those guys on defense. They expect each other to make the play. You cannot count on one guy to do it all. And they've done a great job playing total team defense. Now, Bill Walsh telling us yesterday, he was concerned about this game. He said, hey, you've got a guy like Drew Bledsoe and a band of wild receivers like Pointer, Bobo, Davis, and Sheck Snyder. I expect a close game decided in the final couple of minutes. Well, Stanford has pretty much had things their way. Hot out at the 47. Is it going to go? It's going to go. Liddell's got it. At the four-yard line, Stanford, the turnover. Ron Riddell picked up the fumble and went the other way. That for the Cougar board. Well, here's a guy that's been everywhere all day long. Clarence Williams, he does something you don't see him do very often. The tight end for Washington State. He'll catch the ball right over the middle. Going from right to left here. As he goes down, you see it just lose it just before he gets down, down there on the ground. Billy Whitman right on him, just trying to strip it loose. And Riddell, number 10, picking it up, going down to the four-yard line. You don't see Ferris Williams do that very on, very much, but Riddell having a fantastic game. No surprise that Riddell can fly. He is on Stanford's track and field team during the spring. And I'll tell you what, he has had a career game tonight. He had four tackles in the first four minutes of this game. He's a senior out of Westlake, California, just north of Los Angeles. A big turnover. And it has been a day of frustration for Drew Bledsoe. Quarterback for the Cardinals. Mark Butterfield is now coming in for Stanford as uh, Steve Stenstrom will give way. And boy, what a game it has been for Stenstrom. 14 of 21, 194 yards and a pair of touchdowns. Now Washington State says we've had enough. Call off the dogs. We're going to take a minute to think things over. 7-17 remain. We'll return to Palo Alto in just a moment. Now Stanford's magic in November will continue tonight. And winning nine consecutive games in the month of November when you go all the way back to 1989. While on the other hand, Washington State I'll tell you, when you get close to Turkey Day, Cougars take vacation. Well, they've had a tough the last three seasons. And, uh, they, but they've run up against a real fine Stanford defense, and the Stanford offense has been affected. Glenn Milburn having one heck of a night. It's been tough, and Stanford putting all that pressure on Drew Bledsoe. <laughs> to have that killer instinct you know to finish the team away but you've got to feel for that Washington State defense they've been you know they just sort of been out of position all night long that play they look like they were pinching to stop everything up the middle Emory Roberts Ellery Roberts just breaking off the left side clean in for the touchdown hey, mom, what's up? What's up, 
Fourth touchdown on the year for the senior fullback, Ellery Roberts. Eric Abrams hits the upright, and it caroms between them. It's good. You're going to watch everybody sort of pinching in towards the middle. Fields 29, just, you know, just getting a great block there by Cook. Ellery Roberts just taking it in for the TD. That's the first 100-yard day in Ellery Roberts' career here at Stanford, and he is a fifth-year senior. What a great game to go out on your last game here at home. Oh, on, baby, yeah. What's up, Mom? What's up, Dad? What's up, here? Look at those numbers. 16 carries, 100 yards, go, go, and that four-yard rip through the left side. Next week, the Cardinal of Stanford take about a 45-minute bus ride to Memorial Stadium in Berkeley. While the Cougars of Washington State will play pretty much for pride against the Huskies of Washington. That game a week from today in Pullman. Boy, had the Cougars somehow beat Stanford today, that game a week from today would have been huge. We'll step away. We have an injury down at the five-yard line. 7-13 to play in the ball game at Stanford. 38, Washington State 3. Washington State, they got on the scoreboard on their first possession. It seems like light years ago. Since then, Stanford with 38 unanswered points. 10 in the second quarter. They got a touchdown in the third period. 31-yard rump by Glenn Milburn. And in the fourth quarter, a trio of touchdowns. Mills boots it deep. Pointer looks around and said, why bother? Let's take it at the 20-yard line and let Drew Bledsoe come on and see if he can't get us untracked. You know, it's kind of surprising, Phil. You know, you're you're down behind 38 to 3. There's a flag down way upfield. It might have been somebody just moving across the line of scrimmage too quick, but you want to try and make something happen. You want to give the guy the ball and a return. That was returnable. Stanford's players were really far away from him. Could have broke it past the 20. Now you talk about how difficult this Pac-10 conference is. This is the same Washington State Cougar team that we saw on our second Pac-10 game Reynolds of the week. By the kicking team, re-kick. Re Way back on September 12th, the Cougar team that knocked off the Wildcats of Arizona when Aaron Price hit in the closing minutes. It's been a rather confusing year for Mike Price. He said sometimes we've played like world beaters and other times we couldn't get out of our own way. Now Drew Bledsoe in the ball game. Six of 20, 16 of 26, 149 yards and an interception. Also had the ball stripped away. While Stenstrom, 14 of 21, nearly 200 yards and a pair of touchdown strikes. One to Milburn, the other to Justin Armour. And a week from today, he will be exhibiting his talents across the bay against the Bears of California in the big game, the battle for the axe. Torrey Hunter. He's got it at the four-yard line. And he's not going far. Great kickoff uh, coverage by Stanford. Led by Damon Phillips. Look at the steam. Rising off that noggin, Dwayne Patterson. Well, it cools right down here now. You know, it was warm when we got here at the stadium, but it's dropped. The numbers are dropping. The score is rising, and the temperature's dropping. Yep. You recall I said at the outset of the ball game, I predicted temperatures in the 60s and the score in the 30s. Not bad, partner. Very, very good. Uh, Washington State would like to be up there on their side of the board in the 30s as well. That's so. He's going to be tackled. A safety. Esteban Avila, the fifth-year senior, wants to go out strong. As he nails Bledsoe. Now that is a microcosm of this game for the Cougars. It certainly is. When everything, you know, when it rains it pours, when anything bad that can happen, what's his name, Murphy? Murphy's Law, when it can happen, it'll happen. You'll see 51 who's trying to get off the hold there, the tackle, coming in for the sack and the safety. Every button Stanford has pushed in this ball game has produced results. Now for Mike Price, told me last night he thought he had some, some ideas and looked at the videotape of Stanford's previous games and said, we think we know some things that might work. 
But uh, this has not been a typical outing for Mike Price and the Cougars of Washington State. No, and they've had some uphill battles all year long, and they've done you know, real well coming into this game, 7-2, and 4-2 two, two in the conference. I mean, they've won some really hard-fought battles. They don't have anything to be ashamed of. They've really done well in some of their tougher games. They just faced a Stanford team where everything, as you say, was going right for them tonight. Washington State will punt it away from their own 20-yard line. Short punt. Bounces straight up in the air. Milburn will pick it up at the 37-yard line, and he goes down immediately. But with 6.58 to play, Mark Butterfield and the Stanford Cardinal offense is coming back on. Now, while we have a moment, this is our final Pac-10 game of the year on Prime Network, and so many people who have been a part of our traveling party all year long, our producer, Jerry Mono, our director, Doug Freeman, our production manager, Adam A. Cohn, Chuck McKean, our associate producer, Boyd Robertson, our associate director, Scott Garofo, our technical director, Doug Cofield in videotape, Anthony Hurd on audio, and Seth Shore up here in the box with us, handling stats all year long. They have been with us every step of the way. It's first down at the 37-yard line. Straight ahead it goes, and there's not much running room. Our field stage manager down there with uh, Mike Heems throughout this 1992 Pac-10 season, Greg Byron, and our graphics people. Two of the best in the business, Ken Breitstein and Mitch Reiner. Gentlemen, we thank you very much for a terrific Pac-10 season. We certainly do, and I want to say, you know, I wish everybody out there listening to the game could listen to Jerry Romano in my ear <laughs> from time to time when I, when I don't do something he, he likes or I goof up or something. He's right there to help me out, Jerry. Thank you very much. Second down and seven. The ball now at the 40-yard line. Stanford with the football. The outcome is academic. Well, you the right side. That is Mike Buckley. He is listed number four on Stanford's depth chart. Well, you know, you mentioned at the beginning of the game, Phil, that uh, Stanford is bowl bound. There is a number of bowl games that they could really be in line for if they were lucky enough to finish number two in the Pac-10 conference, which they could do. They could go to the Fiesta Bowl if they finish third in the conference, possibly the Freedom Bowl. Now, Washington State. In spite of this thumping in this ball game, they are still a seven and three ball club, four and three in Pac-10 play. Third down now and eight. Butterfield looking to the right side, tucks it in, trying to get to the marker. He's got it. First down, Stanford. <laughs> When's the last time you saw a quarterback drop his head like that and take on a defender and rattle him? He's shaking there. I can't quite get the number. But uh, number seven, Butterfield, just lowering his head. You know, as I was watching the Stanford team play, you watch number seven here, Mark Butterfield, take off. It's all him. Just a fake. Keep those linebackers. He was going to keep it all the way. Watch him put his head down here. Yeah. First down, Stanford. And it makes me think of, you know, we talked about how good the Stanford team's been. They inherited a very good team from Denny Green. Oh, no question. He's showing what a fine coach. And Bill Walsh will be the first one to tell you that. He showed, he's been showing up in Minnesota with the Vikings how good he really is. He's one of the finest coaches I ever had the privilege to play under. Again, it is a senior running back, Mike Buckley, who carries it through the right side, a former walk-on way back in 1989. Bach continues to run. We're inside 440, 436, 435 to play. Tough ball game for Mike Price. Thought they had it together. Played relatively well a week ago in the extreme bitter cold in Pullman. A wet field against Arizona State. Holding on to knock off the Sun Devils 20 to 18. But as he freely admitted last night, he said, hey, we've been an up and down team. Sometimes our offense plays so very, very well. And other times we can't find the offense. There is Buckley again. Picks up another four, maybe five. Well, I'll tell you something else. There's one thing that, you know, we're not trying to make excuses for anybody, but Mike Price's team with that delay on their flight last night. Yeah, any kind of distraction, Phil, coming into a game, especially when you're going on the road, you know, that's a real negative. It's, we're certainly not going to, to say that that affected the game at all, but the players, I mean, they're thinking about why is this playing late? Are we going to have any problems with this? You know, they're supposed to be concentrating on football. They got in here late last night, practiced on the basketball courts. So, I mean, that wasn't a normal road trip. 
But uh, and perhaps you know if you play in Washington the following week, could you be a little, a little bit uh, maybe thinking about them just a little bit? That's a good point. Muskies a week from today at Martin Stadium in Pullman. Third down and four. Buckley. And here come the Cougars and down he goes. Buckley will lose a couple. In fact, he's going to lose six. Stanford will have to unload it. Here comes Paul Stonehouse. Oh, the Cardinal will get rid of the football with three minutes left. Torrey Hunter is back at his own 13-yard line. Now, Russ, we expected this to be a very close game. You thought Stanford by maybe a touchdown. Bill Walsh thought it would come down to perhaps the final series. Who had the football? Because both teams have exceptional kickers. Stonehouse, low punt. Hunter to the near side. He lets it bounce, picks it up at the eight. Great punt return coverage by the Cardinal. Now the scoring began early. First drive, Aaron Price, Washington State, 41 yards away, 3-0 Cougars. Back came Stanford. Eric Abrams said, if you can do it, I can do it. 29 yards, and they were tied. And then Glenn Milburn, the curtain went up. 42-yard reception from Stenstrom. And then Milburn, a 31-yard run around the left side. And he wasn't done yet. Still third quarter. Milburn, a 21-yard run. Student body right. And then it was Justin Armour, a 7-yard pitch from Stenstrom for Steve Stenstrom. His second touchdown pass of the night. Ellery Roberts from four yards away through the left side. And made it 38 to, correction, made it 38-3. to three. And then Esteban Avila sacked Bledsoe for two. And that is where we stand. And Washington State there showing uh, maybe a little, uh, as we look at the new quarterback, Mike Pattison, showing a little frustration there and maybe uh, saying, hey, listen, we don't want to risk any more than we've already lost. Running play on the last, you, you know, expect him to try and get it downfield, but with 40 points to three, it's almost hopeless. Mike Pattison, he's a junior from Moscow, Idaho, about eight miles east of Pullman. Over the middle it goes, it is caught. He hits the tight end, Brett Carolyn. First time Carolyn has caught the ball tonight, which is a bit unusual because coming into this ball game, Brent Carolyn was the third leading receiver on this Cougar team, 29 catches for over 300 yards. You know, it's real confusing. You, you say to yourself, why? But coaches, they get on a game plan and they, they want to get it to the wide receivers, they want to get it to the backs, and you know, if you're not included in that part of the game plan, they don't change it at halftime, you just don't see the football. As we take a little pause in the action, Phil, I want to say this is our last game together, at least for this year. It's been a pleasure. Thank you very much for your help. Thank all the people from Prime Network that have been with us all through the year. You betcha. It's been a real honor working with you. And likewise, Russ, along with, with Mike Haynes, who joined our Prime Network family here in 92. How y'all doing? Now, there is Darian Gordon. Today's game they call the last walk for the seniors. It is their last game here at Stanford Stadium, Darian Gordon among 22 Cardinal seniors. To the near side, again, it is caught. First time Philip Bobo has been on the receiving end of a Cougar pass. Stops the clock with 42 seconds. Excuse me, Bobo. you know I said it's been an honor working with you. I just sort of take for granted. Mike and I have been teammates for years over with the Patriots before he went to the Raiders and I went to uh, San Francisco. Michael, if you're listening, it sure has been a pleasure and honor working with you again. It's been a long time. And, uh, and you've done as great a job at this as you ever did at corner. Yeah, both of you. Welcome additions here in 1992. Third down now and six. Patterson with time. Now moves to the right. Unloads downfield. And it is incomplete at the 27. In the neighborhood, Delton Johnson out of the backfield. He's a tailback. Boy, he was a long way from the backfield of Washington State. And there's Bill Walsh. Now, Russ, I really believe Walsh was concerned, sincerely concerned about this matchup. Oh, he certainly was. I mean, they're Washington State's offense. I mean, they're capable of scoring a lot of points. And he was correct, you know, in saying that they could score 30-plus points. We watched their other 
Uh, we other uh, receiver, former teammate of man Mike Wilson, go by Pat Bell on the shoulder. Good game. They've all done a great job all season long with that whole new coaching staff, four, former 49 players. They all take a lot of credit with a good team left to them by Jim Green. Matheson unloads again, and it is incomplete. Intended for the tight end, Brett Carroll. And the clock stops with 30 seconds left. And that is the last gas for the Cougars. Mike Price's Cougs are going to have to punt it away. That last play is kind of indicative of the way the whole game has gone, Phil. Fred Carroll in number 89, the ball looked like it was catchable. Either he didn't see it, didn't know it was there, didn't expect to be in the pattern, but it was a catchable football. Just, you know, it wasn't going to happen. That's the way it's been for Washington State all night. There's a look at sophomore correction junior Mike Patterson out of Moscow, Idaho. <laughs> fourth down so Stanford took over on downs at the 34 yard line that is Nathan Olson carrying the football next up are Bill Walsh and Stanford the Golden Bears of California well for Drew Bledsoe it'll be Bledsoe and Mark Brunel locking it up a week from today in Pullman and that is the final play of the game for the seniors of Stanford, the last hurrah, the final walk. 22 Stanford Cardinal players say goodbye to Stanford Stadium. Final score, the Cardinal of Stanford 40, Washington State 3. We're coming back to Palo Alto, California in just a moment.